podcast that you can also cut up into an uh, ASMR, an ASMR video. ASMR. I'm ASMR big in the video. ASMR and community. And it would be heard eating popcorn into the mic, and then who knows what you could sell those Here's the thing. For. Tasha could go it. viral just chewing food. That's that's the allure of men online. They'll absorb any content women put out there if they want to fuck them. I, yes. So there's a. I know what the bar is set so fucking low. It's her account is food with so and so, and all she does is eat, and everyone wants to watch her eat. Apparently, but I, you know what's if crazy? I, if I was like food with Jonesy, no one would give a shit. No one, no one, would one give wants a to shit. watch me eat. No Nobody. one cares. No one cares what I'm eating. They don't care. And if they did want to watch you, you wouldn't trust them as a human. You I would think I mean? they're weird. But for some reason, women, it, they think that they are like quirky or char- Like It's like, no, no, no. Guys want to fuck you. So they're absorbing whatever you put out there. I'm not. And then if you have talent on top of that, you're a megastar. Yeah, mega you are star. a megastar. I'm, I'm not talking like, look, I'm talking in the. Is this recording? Are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. Yeah, he's recording. And happy Women's Day. <laughs> International Women's Day. Is that today or yesterday? Yesterday. It was yesterday. I didn't post anything Someone for it. I feel bad, but I just, I don't really do those days. <laughs> this dude that I Not know. Not the Women's Day, no days. I don't do Bacon Day. I don't do Tree Day, whatever the days well, are. Well, here's do. the thing. Did Women's Day. Women and Bacon are the same thing. <laughs> I said The same game. important Trees. <laughs> just slop. What's more important, trees or women? <laughs> I don't know. Well, look, do women steal oxygen. I would say trees, trees are more important than all humans. <laughs> Someone posted this. They were like, it must have been a slow Valentine's Day in sales because they're really pushing this International Women's Day. And I was like, you know, you got to point i've never heard of it before this is one of those like barrington bears burning burrington you know what i mean you know yeah, like, what do they call those what's You've that never called? heard of women's day before no, i've never heard of international women's day but apparently it's every year what's it called it's, it's every year march 8th hold international up. women's day we're on to something though what's it called when when like you never heard of something before but apparently it existed in you effect. the Manda- mandela the mandela the mandela, effect. mandela effect yeah that's that bernstein bear one that you said yeah is it the mandela yeah. effect did yeah. women's day exist did women's ha- did they vote it before has this always year existed. all right i'm kidding let's get right into it hey everybody welcome to the sap it's your boy dave neil with tasha Since courtney 1908 Where i'm doing the intro founded in 1908 cool Fifteen thousand women protested marched through the streets of new york because they wanted Better hours, better wages, and voting rights. Yeah, the comedians did that 30 and years ago, and where are we? For m- <laughs> since 1908, March 8th is International Women's Day. So, yes, it has always existed. You make more than Jonesy and I combined. So, c- congratulations, you won. Okay, the fight's Working over. On the wage gap one at a time. Yeah, that's my <laughs> joke. I go, I go, I'm a feminist. My girl makes more money than I do. I'm shrinking the wage gap. That's my thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Anyway, cool. we are with Jonesy. What do we go? Chris, what do we do? Just, just Jonesy? Are you just... It's just Jonesy, mostly. Just Jonesy. Yeah, yeah. Just my Tasha. mom calls me Christopher, but it would be weird if you guys did. I like Chris. <laughs> Christopher's, that's sophisticated, though. Is it sophisticated? Does she, say, does she call you Christopher when, you know, when, uh, you know, You're you did something trouble. wrong? Yeah, when I'm in trouble. We like, gotta go uh, right you know, like arresting officers would call me oh, that I as well. It's My like mom calls me Tasha Marie. Whenever is I'm like about to get name? scolded. Yeah, Tasha Marie. Oh, and I, she I runs it right through. It really flows <laughs> off the skin. Tasha Marie. David Coleman Neal. <laughs> Coleman? What have you done? Your middle name is Coleman? Cheers, man. Oh, We're that's wonderful. Guinness. You've been this named after a grill. I know. Or a camping site. The dog's barking. I don't know why. He wants a Guinness. Um, I'm just going to go out of the bottle. Is that... Oh, you got me a... I did. We got a fancy mo- If you're going to drink Guinness, man, you really get a glass. Ladies right. and gentlemen listening, we're going to just take it slow to start this episode here. We're recording on a Saturday night, March 9th. It was uh, International it's Women's Day. It's been a long time since I've seen anyone drink a Guinness. I know. And, and St. Patty's, everybody brings them out. Boom, shut up. Oh, yeah, speaking of that, it's coming up. St. Patty's is like a week from tomorrow. Yeah. The dog's barking in the background. A real dynamic podcast so far. Cheers, man. Or is it a week from today? Look, Cheers. I said, what kind of beer do you want? And I was hoping you were going to say a lager because I, I don't know if I like Guinness or not. And I know like there's guys listening going, you faggot. You know what I mean? Like, Why, because you don't like Guinness? Yeah. I don't know if a I A lot like of people it. don't like Guinness. Is there, is there a special way to drink it? So do I need to hit the back of the tongue? Or is there something going on here with it? <laughs> no, you're doing it right. Yeah, you just, uh, there you oh, go. that's nice. How many episodes have you been on with us? This will Two, be the, three? This will be the third. Happy third? Yeah, but neither of them involved you. Yeah, hey, we, we, we both did it. We both we did, you did it. made it happen. Yeah, you were doing it brought the solo. old bag out here for the International yeah. Women's Day episode. We did one episode in, in an alley in Chinatown. That was fun. That was real fun. Yeah. It's hard to find a quiet place in this town. The dogs just let the dog bark. If, if you guys listen, if you hear the dog barking in the background, you know what? We got a happy 10-year-old basset hound. The neighbors are having a party. That's probably why he's barking. It's a crazy Saturday night here at the uh, Sap Studios. And you're coming in town. You're in town from uh, all the way over there in Chinatown. 
Oh, tonight I came from, um, where was I? Mid City. What are you doing over there? You had a mic or a show? Uh, we shot a video today. Oh, yeah? Mm. Comedy yeah. sketch? What are you doing? Yeah, it was a sketch. It was a little thing I wrote. Uh, got together with a couple comedians. Do you know Justin Wade? Nope. Andy Southern? Nope. All right. I'm really uh, <laughs> killing it out here in the community. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how the, how many comics you, you guys are going to have to talk? There's a billion of them. I've got to put a barking collar on this dog. Oh, you have a barking collar? Yeah. Is that just kind of a freaky sexual thing that you guys have? <laughs> that you, <laughs> that's you know, we like to man, spice things up. You guys are living large <laughs> over here <laughs> in K-Town. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It is scary. Dead air, dead air, dead air. You know, I like podcasts that, that, that make you feel like you're in the room with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes you got to put a barking collar on the dog. And do, we, do you really want someone to listen to a podcast that gets all nitty and gritty if you say um too many times? Was that a complaint? I, I'm in the uh, podcast common. subreddit. It's common. And, I, and there's a whole discussion with people saying how much time they spend editing the podcast. Yep. You don't edit podcasts. No. The whole point of a podcast is that you don't have commercial breaks. You don't have radio. You just go. Sometimes you forget the name of your guest or the dog barks. Tasha throws a fit because you don't remember International Women's Day. It's part of the process. I guess it depends on how much money you, you have for production. <laughs> if, you're M, if you're NPR, they spend you know a week just editing one episode. Well, and I guess there are maybe some people that have to think about what yeah. they're going to say and say it a couple times, like making a movie. So like here's the like actors. So the podcast just opens up the world of uh, amateurs putting out content. And when you're dealing with amateurs that are on the microphone, you're going to get a lot of ums and fumblings. And now podcasts have been around long enough for us to kind of be used to these amateurs that have their own show. One could even argue, and, and I've done so, that Mark Maron is a terrible uh, is a terrible podcaster. And the way he interviews a guest, in my opinion, is so shitty. What's, why, uh, why is it shitty? Because the entire time, so this is my impression of Mark Maron interviewing a guest. Um, let me, I'll ask you a question and you start answering. Okay. So, um, Wait, Dave, can, I be, can I be like a celebrity? Yeah, who do you want to be? I'd like to be Bradley Cooper. Um, okay, can after, you do a Bradley Cooper I'd like to impression? Be, not really, but I'd like to be Bradley Cooper after the movie Limitless. Limitless? Okay. I didn't see that. Can okay. we do the Brad, Notebook movie? Um, uh, Ryan, who's Silver the, Linings. Silver Linings Playbook? Okay. So let me ask you, Bradley, uh, for Silver Linings, uh, did you take some dancing lessons? You, you were quite nimble in there. Could you tell me about that? Well, you know, Jennifer and I uh -huh. really uh -huh. tried to do uh -huh. organic <laughs> uh -huh. type of thing where right? we got... Mark, do you mind sure. if I... Right? Just for one second? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we have this process that we like to uh -huh. do, and it's a Meisner technique right? where we yeah. look into each other's uh -huh. eyes and... Just try uh -huh. to really, really <laughs> Do they do that? Oh, dude, I can't listen to it. Really? <laughs> That's just my I, thing. It's been a long time since I've listened to his podcast, but I had listened to it before. But I can't stand the ones where it's like a big group of guys. Like if it's more than three people, it's very irritating to me, especially like what's that rowdy one that you really like? Which one? Uh, they just com like the shout comedy seller? at each other the whole time and they talk over each other and it makes my brain scramble. Like my, my spine, I listen to my um, Live at the Table. Table. It's the Comedy Cellar podcast where they podcast from the table in the bar at the Comedy Cellar. And oh, there's always be like, madness. They'll be doing it and they'll be like, uh, you know, like, Keith Robinson, get up. And they'll just like, uh, uh, yeah. comics just come and go and nonstop. The way my my brain's wired, I like it. I like uh, I like feeling like I'm in mm. like a crowded elevator and everyone's talking. You want me to do it? Let's do the same thing. I'm going to imitate Joe Rogan now. Uh, okay, okay. So who okay. do you want to be okay, now? Okay, I'd like to be Bradley Cooper okay. in um, Wedding Crashers. Okay, in Wedding Crashers. What? Yeah, he was in Wedding Crashers for all of you out there. Wedding Crashers? He played the asshole boyfriend. Just keep going. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, now, before one. before Wedding Crashers, Bradley, did you have any experience in uh, comedic acting? Well, you know, I studied at a pretty... Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> fascinating. It's, it's entirely possible. <laughs> That's fascinating. Interesting. Yeah, you Interesting. Know, uh, fascinating. I like to use fascinating. mushrooms Interesting. to really get into the spirit of the character. Fascinating. Sometimes fascinating. I'll uh, trip on acid. Interesting fascinating you're good at this you should just do a <laughs> podcast where you <laughs> do <Imitate> other <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is the, the thing that makes podcasting not to like um you know blow my own dick here the thing that makes podcast because i can't uh, interesting with comics is that we like to bullshit already so it's a natural fit i think i don't i don't know i mean if people want to be out there and listen to a po uh, you know pro podcast about true crime or or whatever like you don't necessarily get the 
aura or the personality of the comic. So what's the point of doing the podcast as the comic? Like they're tuning into your flavor. Like your podcast is called Weird AF News, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they like to hear the news, but they like to hear your spin on it. They like to hear the jokes. Yeah, they don't even care about the news. They want to hear... I th- I think most of them enjoy my spin on the news because you can get the weird well, news. Well, that's pretty the difference. Anyway. Like anybody can read a weather forecast, that's right. right? Like it takes having like right. something special. Like people want to see that person, and that's why they love Al Roker. That's why he's Al Roker because he's like that's himself. True. He's weird. He's quirky. Nobody else can ever be Al Roker. I wait, I turn the Today Show on and just say hi to everyone. I go, Hey Dylan. Hey Al. How are you? You What's have that going kind on of Savannah? relationship. I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just like familiarity in my life. On my podcast, I'm I'm reading. I'm actually reading articles. Like I'm reading the article, but then I'll take a break and I'll make comments about what I'm reading as I'm going. I'll make fun of the people's names that if, and they're involved. If it's something I can't pronounce, I'll make fun of myself for not doing that. I'll stop and be like, "Well, I got some questions here. Like, what the hell?" You know. Yeah. And then before we move on, and so it's that they like that. It's your irreverence. Otherwise, you could just read an article. Like right. You could read a weird news article. So yeah, it's it's my what I what I bring to it. I like to think is uh, how do you source unique. your weird news? Uh, where people it's where a combo find? platter. Combo platter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find articles myself on Twitter and Reddit, and then I. But I, you know, lately I've been getting emailed quite a bit of articles Ooh, from my listeners, so my, nice. my job is getting a lot easier. It's yeah, nice. I'm getting yeah. you know probably ten articles sent me a day. Wow. Really? And wow. how many days a week are you doing it? Five days a week. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I only doing do three a day. You do three. Wait. You do three articles a day. Mm-hmm. And so do you have a setup that you just, it's ready to go and you hit the button? Uh, like, meaning? Like your audio and all that. What are, you, what are you recording on your phone? I record it on my phone. Jeez. See, look, yeah. I got to wipe the, all this shit down. After I know you every, got this. this do you know get I, I don't I have anything have? like this. Bro, I got, a one, I got one bin in this whole apartment that's for me. And then she puts her shit in the bin too. So I got my bin plus her Not shit. Not true. And I got a condom Marie it, right? So it has, everything has to have a home. You know what I mean? No, you don't know what I mean? Yeah, we all know what you mean. But Jonesy lives Netflix. by himself. You you get to operate the way your brain wants. You don't have to negotiate. Have you lived with a woman before? I do have to negotiate. I have to negotiate with helicopters because I live in downtown LA. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. We got that too. And then I had a, the building across from me did a total renovation. And so for about 10 months, it was construction every day. Oh, jeez. So that's it was, so it was, annoying. It was, but still. If you're a podcaster, it's annoying. That's you, can, sure. you can wake up and say, this is what I'm going to do with my day. And look, there's good things about our relationship. I'm not sandbagging you, Tasha. But I have to. Oh, we're going into to, the area where you guys. Okay. Yeah, we're going to jump right <laughs> into it. All right. Go, <laughs> ahead, go weird, ahead. Here's uh, some weird AF for news this. for you. Yeah. But like, I have to. You know, I'm a fiercely independent person who has to. But she's. Uh, fiercely plus one. She's uh, she's slightly more stubborn and independent than I am, so I have to cater to make sure you know she's taken care of before I do my. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Don't I don't. Think don't you're uh, just complaining about me. Can't we listen to like what the weirdest news news article of this week was? That's good. first of all, that's horrible improvisation that you just. Mm-hmm. No, I really wanted to hear all some right. weird articles. Okay. I'm done then. We had a lot of weird <laughs> shit this week. It's uh. Well, are they all true? Do you fact check? Or some, is it just Sometimes like I fact check because sometimes they sound too outlandish and I'm like, this can't be, this can't be real. And, and then sometimes I'm blown away like a, a story about a woman who married a dead pirate from the 1400s and I'm like, this can't be real. Then Can I you check do that? It, I'm like, it's real. It's really real. <laughs> it's it sounds real. like a Where was that? Ireland maybe. Like the yeah, it wasn't here. Something. It's like in, uh, I think it's Canada maybe. I can't remember. Yeah, we. I don't think we let that fly. Yeah, you can't uh, marry a dead person here, right? You can't marry a dead person. And what here. we found out is you can't slander a dead yeah, person. Yeah. That's it's a new thing. You in can't, in you can talk as much shit about that. I'm not surprised about that at all. Uh, th- the way it's going. I've come across some various weird marriages. Someone married their duvet cover. Uh, somebody married a zombie doll, and somebody married a dead pirate. Somebody married a, another ghost. What's the point? Is this a tax thing? Do you get like a dependent? <laughs> I don't know. Is <laughs> a dead pirate <laughs> dependent on you? There's got to be something for Maybe it. Maybe that. I feel like I I heard something about somebody marrying a ghost. Yeah, the, mar- the ghost thing I covered. That, that was the Irish chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she she said she was like fucking a ghost. Yeah, she was like coming from it. Which I you can come from a dream. I wouldn't. I don't know why you couldn't come from a ghost. No, this is pathology. Yeah. Yeah, this is a crazy person. You think so? A hundred percent. Yeah. It's all you know. You know what's causing a lot of schizophrenia in people is these cats. <laughs> cats. Cats have a disease. Uh-huh. What's the disease? 
I don't know, These but I do know what you're talking about. These have a disease that's causing people to go insane. Do you, are you a cat guy? Well, these uh, the cats in downtown LA are carrying typhus, which there you is go. a disease from the Middle Ages. Yeah, and now they're getting people because it's carried by lice, I believe. Jesus so, Christ! Yeah, there's also hepatitis outbreaks yes, in downtown LA. I know. It's major diseases in downtown. Did you LA. hear about this about the comic who died this week with that hep- hepatitis? Who? Jeff Mitroka. I don't know. Him. Yeah, he was just a nice guy. He wasn't I like famous. He was just like an open micer. What's he doing with hepatitis? I don't know. He you was know a rock star back in Nashville. You know or how something. you get it? It's contracted through feces. I thought you can get it from sex. Or this is needles. the needles. This there, first but of there's all. multiple types of hepatitis. hepatitis but a, yes, the one in downtown. This is the problem the with our that, New England. No, 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 no. Let me talk for one second. Uh, that I was just talking to my mom because we have like a a bunch of people pooping in our. <laughs> back alleyway oh, so and I'm yeah, like that's well, how it happens dog out there this and is I'm how like, down, we're all gonna down, get hepatitis that's right, that's or right. like hookworm or something that's what you get because our dogs walk out mm-hmm. there and then they walk inside and they 100%. sit on the couch that's how it's happening that's why in downtown LA and in San Diego they had a major major hepatitis outbreak here's what I didn't this. know it's the homeless and the, it's I didn't know this till um I moved to LA that if you see shit that starts two feet off the ground on a wall and goes down the wall that's not dog shit no dog is shitting against a wall yeah, that's two right. feet high. That's a human leaning I've against I've seen that a lot, wall. and I always find that fascinating because I, I don't <laughs> think I could shit like that. They need what they need to oh, do. Oh, can I tell you a story about one time do. I was I in, don't uh, talk I was about in the, uh, the W Hotel in Union Square, which is a place I used to like to go to crap in New York City because you could just walk up to the second floor mm-hmm. and take a dump, and it was amazing. And at one time I was in there, and uh, they have a nice big comfortable stall. It was like middle of the day just came from an audition my agency was around the corner i, I just i was always in that area and guy comes in shaking on my door like that then i hear the urinal flush walks out i walk out he crapped in the urinal oh. he crapped in the urinal how how well when what, you gotta go, i mean what if kind it's of an magic? emergency how do you get up there how I'm does that happen he backed it up backwards he didn't like i couldn't do the that urinal, do he? you think you could do that I mean, I've sh- I've had a shit in the woods before, so I'm yeah, imagining the different. urinal. No, like I how mean, do you get psycho- up into the urinal? Listen, we've we've I can't developed. Do that. <laughs> Maybe because uh, I'm short. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> we've gone to the squatty potty, and you don't go back. Do you know the squatty potty? Yeah, yeah. I saw you get it. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, got to yeah. use a squatty potty. It yeah, I should get one. It changes your life. Yeah, Twenty I, bucks, man. <laughs> yeah, I should get one. Give it's, it, you know. It's really good. And you know what you yeah. do if you're at the hotel? If you're at a hotel and they don't have a squatty potty, you just take the extra toilet paper rolls. No, that's and disgusting. Sta- and do not put your feet on. No, no, no. The ones toilet. that are that are pre-wrapped or whatever. You know what I mean? You just oh. you just get a MacGyver. You got to MacGyver your shits. What if you just get those uh, those shoes that the band members in Kiss wear? Those platforms. <laughs> there you go. Those are my pooping shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting on my pooping shoes. <laughs> I only found the stiletto, the ones that go to your knees. <laughs> they got my sequins pooping shoes. <laughs> clink, clink. You just hear me clink, clink, clink. <laughs> You got to worry about your uh, pooping schedule when you live together. That's the other thing. You know what I mean? I mean, every past relationship I ever <laughs> had, I never shat within a square mile of someone I was dating. Yeah. It's just I used something to, you used to Me and my ex used to crap with the door open and stuff. We're really? Cool. We're cool with that. It's, it's even all good. Uh, even, even my, my ex before me. that, before you're, that, but I've you're been a, very... We're, you're a Boston suburb guy. You didn't yes. have the Catholic sort of shame well, of Well, no, yeah, I had... Ca- I was... Uh, I was raised Catholic, yeah. But were you... Were your parents... Did they, did they not, like... Sh- were you not raised to just like apologize and be afraid to talk about anything? Like I never talked to my mom about pooping. You mm. know what I mean? It's just a biological thing you do. You poop, you know. You, but, but, but she had to teach you to poop. Someone had to teach you. To I poop. don't know. I think she like subcontracted my uncle to teach me how to pee. You know, because I didn't have a dad, so like I feel like my mom would like got my got my uncle to show me how to pee standing up or whatever. But I don't know. I don't. You didn't know how to pee standing up out the get go. I don't think so. I don't know. It's pretty natural. Is it? Yeah. No, because you go from diapers to then what? You don't know. Yeah, maybe. You need to, what, what yeah, the thing is with sometimes I sit on the toilet. Because peeing standing up. I sit up, on you, the toilet late at night. Yeah, when well I'm you, tired. You need to, and, and I thought of this. I thought of this today about International Women's Day. I thought about this. I was thinking women will never know the feeling of standing up, like sticking your belly out and peeing into a urinal. I'm not saying you can't pee into a urinal. I'm sure you could finagle it or like pull your coochie in the right mm. i'm sure i've seen videos you Good know Lord. i'm sure you could like steer it but like you'll never know what it's like to just fucking pee check your phone while Thanks you're doing for it rubbing it in i'm, I'm just saying I'm it's sure a, they'll be fine <laughs> it just, it, but really it's nothing great to write home about it's honestly. the last thing we i'm have. never like oh look what i can do <laughs> but then we have to deal with like you know you'll be using like a this is disgusting but you'll be using like a toilet somewhere and like your dick might hit something I'm not saying I got a big dick. I don't. But it, sometimes your dick will hit something. That's disgusting. It'll, it's kind of gross. Well, sorry, Tasha. This is 
This is life. Sometimes yeah, but you, you know, these something. girls are squatting in you know bushes and stuff. What do you mean? It's there's like a risk of the coochie hitting something too, probably more so than us because we don't get that close to the ground. You know. You ever hear a female pee? You know that that sound is. What do you mean? Yeah, of course. It's a whole thing. It's powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. <laughs> It's a it's powerful just, stream. It feels it's aggressive. Very vulgar. Listen, I'll pee for like five minutes straight. I'll literally just pee and pee and pee. Don't you hate that though? It's and frustrating. I'd rather just pee like a woman, which is quick and it's like it's like a my Niagara Falls and then I'm done after a second. Everybody turn your volume wanna, up in I'm your standing car. there. I got shit to do. I'm standing there. I'm like, Jesus, I'm, I got shit to do. It's I can't be like standing here for five if minutes. You just sliced open a water balloon. Yeah. That's what a woman pees it's like. It's amazing. And this Tasha, she'll close the door if she's got to poop. But if she has to pee, she'll she'll keep it open. And I just, I still five years dating at her. I laugh at her when I see her pee. She's in there and you she looks at me, funny? just like looks at me like, <laughs> sorry, it's my human body. And I go, you <laughs> fucking monster with that pee. It's a monster. <laughs> What's going on in there? It, You're it, not it, jealous at all. But I you, am. You have a tube. Is it the fallopian tube? What's the tube called? The urethra? What is it? It's it's on a man. It's a urethra. We I have the same tube as you do. Yet somehow do? it comes out like a women have smaller bladder but they pee faster it's got to be psychological i bet you there's some sort of like reason genetically for women to pee faster i don't know y'all are gonna have to ex ask an expert on that that's why mm. we brought jonesy in here i think <laughs> you have an expert on women peeing you're gonna you know you're gonna have some weird af news where like mm -hmm. you know some like domestic fight happens because the women pee too loud and you're gonna think of me <laughs> that's what's gonna, i'm not saying I'm, tasha this isn't a threat you can pee as loud as you want it's totally fine <laughs> i'm just saying as a uh, anyway let's move on so uh, this is this is big news, Jonesy. Um, we did a show a couple weeks ago. I picked you up. We drove to the show. We crushed, right? It was a fun time. Mm -hmm. Unlimited beers, Common Space Brewery, my new favorite place. And then and then I go to drive Jonesy home like a, like a good first date. We had a good rapport, and he's telling me why I got to get on Patreon. Now, Tasha, I know you've told me I need to get I on Patreon. I told him for like six months. I know you've told me that, but like there's a lot of... But it doesn't matter when it comes from me. No, I'm just saying combined, oh boy, the two of you happens. are... <laughs> very it's very special what the yeah. two of you created in in convincing me to do it because i'll i don't think i ever would have pulled the trigger i don't i really don't and jonesy you've got a patreon that's, that's going right. well you know you're doing your thing it's okay you're yeah, yeah. releasing extra episodes and you're brainstorming with me what to do and of course i wanted mm -hmm. to give it every everything away for free mm -hmm. I, if it was up to me every tier would be free i would pay you to just go on my page i'm so sorry for existing that's just how i'm always going to be you know what i mean like, that's just how I am. But, like, you know, I had to negotiate with Tasha the price levels for the tier, which okay. was kind of fun. Like, we, you know, we're like, well, for this level, we'll give this. And we got a fucking postcard level. Like, shit I would have never done. Um, so we, we launched it. We got six people. We got Great. six people. And it's your first month. So that's. Yeah. I think I had something like. But only, only one of them. Six people in my first month or five people. Well, one of, the, one of the guys I know, he signed up today. Everyone else we didn't know, which is great. We wow, didn't know them. Fantastic. They were just like. You know, because I know that sounds... They're internet friends. Internet friends. But it yeah. sounds sad to say that. But you know what I mean? A lot of times, you got to be like... I, and, and I've seen people that, that pay for their own Patreon just to be the first one because they're so nervous no one's going to show up. It's like throwing a birthday online mm -hmm. and nobody shows. That's sure. a fear, you know? And do you advertise it on every show? We, yeah, we just started. But yeah, yeah. We, like... I did too. And then people will, will randomly... I'll wake up to an email that says like, Gabrielle, join your Patreon. And I go, what the fuck? That's amazing. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Good. Thank you, And then Gabby. you give them a shout out on the show, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's what I oh, do. Oh, we're going to well. like shout them out for... They're yeah, going to yeah. be like, we canceled seven years. They're going to be like, thank you still. I appreciate <laughs> it. But I want to get to the point where like, Anyone who's like at a Patreon level, free tickets to shows. You know, I'm not touring. You know what I mean? But yep. like, I want to be at that point where it's like, if you're, I would love like, that You're too. in my fucking. Fa if you, that's right. If you're signing up now, you know, you know, John. So we, we, our trajectory is to like, you know, TV credits, get on, you know, get out there and tour. Like that's what comics want to mm -hmm. do. We just want to tell jokes in front of human live audiences, whatever. And and it's like, if I think we should say that the first hundred <laughs> patrons. Should should be able to get any tickets to any show ever. Is that something? Can I can I offer that? <laughs> I think you have the control of that, right? Mm -hmm. That right. And then if you ever at a comedy club, would would you like? How would I make that work? I, I this isn't planned. I just thought of this. But like, should I like I like should I have it so that like forever? <laughs> and it's like you're betting on me that I'm gonna maybe be successful. But it's like forever you get tickets to a show. I don't care where I'm performing. Yeah, yeah I like that. That's a nice I mean, idea. For everyone or just the first X amount? They don't care, the, the audience. All right, first 100 people. You get no, to come. No, first 10 well, but people. It, but it'd be up to them to be like, they'd have to know that they're like OG. All these people already do know that they're OG. 
No, but if you're but if you're gonna open your wallets and join the Patreon, you're that's OG. Like we have plenty of people that listen and support and all that, but like if you're gonna like cross that line and put your Babe, credit card I think info in, already you don't even have to. For, like already, you know in your heart these people are OG, and you're gonna be taking care of them anyway. Second beer, you're going for it. But yeah, I could use a second beer. You're too. gonna have to finish that one. Okay. Here's the thing: is is the glass get you can drink it a lot faster. And I'll tell you what, I'm a big fan of Guinness at it's this pretty. point. You Are you ready it? for another one? Yeah, I am. So anyway, cheers to you, and thank you for getting our Patreon going, and thank you to our first six. The first six. I'm proud of you guys. We need to set up like a reward because we have a two hundred dollar reward, but um, we don't have like we need. You know what we need is a. They they said it's it's good to get up to a hundred dollars in your first month, and I think out of the first six, we're at forty four dollars. But I, I want to get to. I don't. I think we're almost at a month, so you know it might be the second month. But uh, that's we, ambitious. What, the hundred. That's but that's yeah. That wasn't what, even close to that. My right, first month. That's what they wrote. But like, what what would be a good first month reward for us to give people? What like, the, like, because now that we've got, your, like, what do you mean? People? They get the, they get the, whatever tier they drew up. They, they, no, but they, you can set up rewards. So like, like for me, I said, once I said, once I get a thousand dollar, once we get to the thousand dollar benchmark, yeah, yeah. instead of doing two bonus episodes a week or two bonus a month, I'm going to do four. So basically I'm going to do an extra Friday episode once I get to a certain threshold. So like once I'm, once, once the Patreon's bringing in enough money, I can work less of my side job and literally show people that I have more time to do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, and I, but I'm thinking like, I kind of want to do sp specific episodes that are just Patreon, like, s like dating specific. Like, you know, this week I'm going to read this book and I'm going to just recap yeah, it. Yeah. You fully. should do that. I do Patreon specific stuff. What's, well, like, what's a Patreon specific thing that you offer? Well, cause on my show, I'm just doing news, but on my Patreon, I'll do interviews. You won't get it. You won't hear an interview on the actual podcast ever. You won't hear another individual on an episode on my podcast. You won't. Unless it's just me. construction next door. Unless it's construction and I'm going, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> hey, gay over there. <laughs> the weird news. Shut <laughs> so uh, you'll get things like interviews. And I'm considering, because I do a bonus episode for them, which, and I'll do what I call B-sides. They're the stories in the previous month that I didn't do because I got a, I got like a bin of stories and I don't get to all of them. So it's very I'll do 90s cassette deck of you. Very That's 90s cool. cassette deck. To me, I thought that was, it was like very nostalgic to call them that. But uh, I thought for the next B-sides for this month, I'll have another comic do it, do it with me. So they'll get two people talking about the weird stories. Uh, which is what you'll never get on the oh, podcast. Oh, can I do you, that with you sometime? Would you like to do that? I fucking love to do weird stories. Would you stories. do the, uh, would you want to do the first one with me yes, for March? Okay. Absolutely. 100%. You get Tasha to do one. Fuck it. Tasha we, likes weird can shit. We, can we record it right over here? Because you got great equipment. Absolutely. Come on over. And, and we'll I just bring my Guinness. little discard and we'll pick it. <laughs> I like, yeah, no, I like the idea of of the Patreon being like, I'm like, this is secret. This is me and you. This this past episode, I recorded a solo one yesterday, Tasha. I talked about my court case. I was in. I just settled my court case from three years. I from gave your car accident. all the info on the Patreon episode. I, first of all, I can legally. I'm gonna share. By the time people are listening to this, I'm gonna share the video of my car accident on the Patreon <laughs> only. Your X-rays. <laughs> I'm gonna show like just. I'll, I'll make the video public, but at least people can go over to the patreoncom slash the app and they can actually see what the fucking six second video you know what i mean but like it'll live there for months before i'm gonna put it anywhere else because why not that could be a special thing you get on the patreon yeah if you want to see me get i put my comedy <laughs> album on there if they join it they get to download it for free there you go yeah we did um we did uh the, our first brunch show last week or uh, last month actually three weeks ago you do it and at brunch at a restaurant we do it at the fourth wall hollywood do you know where that is uh-huh it's like a thirty seater. It is so. I I hook you up. You sell that. sell it thirty. You sell it out to do your podcast. Well, it's like a, so we do we do. It's a free show. We t we take oh. donations. So this is how the first the first uh, month worked. We we did a free show. Took donations and I did nine liters of champagne. So we made how many gallons is that with the with the OJ? That's a lot of mimosas. <laughs> Everyone got fucking wasted. Uh, that drank. And and then we did LaCroix for the fucking losers. They can't drink. And uh, it was a great <laughs> show. And I hooked up I hooked up the pro audio. So I hooked up the I, I, I mixed the audio from the like the comics mouth like through the PA system and also like the ambient noise. It, it was like I, I think it was like album 
quality audio. I think it was really good. I played a I played a little bit of it for people last uh, two episodes ago, uh-huh. and then I just I got every I got every comics permission because I didn't want to burn comics material. But I was like, look, if you want to, I'm gonna put it on my Patreon. Literally, it's for a select group of people. They can stream it. They're not gonna share it. Blah blah blah. One one comic didn't want to be on it. I won't say who it was, but he he didn't want to be on it. And he had a good set, but he was like, I don't think he was. Every other comic was like, oh, fucking upload it. But you know, still like a ninety plus minute comedy show that mm-hmm. people can get for by joining the patreon and i want that to be a monthly thing that's amazing but i i don't want to make any com no like no pressure for comics like doing some weird shit and it doesn't work out fine but if i get a good audience i think most comics will be okay with it because every comic crushed you know what i mean mm-hmm. so we're still working on how to make the the because you know 99 percent of our listeners don't live in hollywood you know what i mean so they can't come to the brunch show but i want to make it so like they're there i don't know and I want to you get you. I want to get you on it. So what's your? What do you want me to do? Here on are that? the two options I have. You just want me to tell jokes? I want you to do. No, no, no. It's just a stand-up show. No, it's just stand. There's no. There's no podcasting. Oh, at I all. thought you were podcasting. No, 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 no. It's, it's just, just stand-up. The SAP kind of like sponsors it. We pass out sex toys because we have a well, fucking and it's all sex like toys. Past guests. It's and it's all past guests for the most part. Oh, I've okay. had to pull a few favors, people that haven't been guests yet, but for the most part, yeah. it's past guests. Mm-hmm. Tasha passes out, and I, I'd love to get Tasha involved more, but I feel I don't want to project Tasha. But I feel like you wouldn't want to. But if you want to open the show up with some fucking stories, yeah, do some stand up. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll take a pass. Basically, I just give Tasha a bucket of. Uh, sex toys and then i say hey tasha throw me a sex toy and she throws me a sex toy that's kind of the uh the uh tasha's she was a, a magician's assistant so she's good at this type of work <laughs> oh. maybe next time i'll make you walk across the stage like a ring girl and pass out the <laughs> sex toys would you be okay with that if we did that no no okay well they anyway the audio the patreon only gets the audio version anyway so they can imagine that you're there sitting next that's to us very but cl- that's crafty of you it's really that's a cool thing it's to just a stand-up show I know it's really neat though, because can you imagine? Because I look at these patreons, I see what people like. Before I set mine up, I reviewed many of them to see what they were offering them, and it was a lot of eh, a lot of a mostly lot of just bonus episode, another episode. A lot of people don't video. follow through. This is kind of cool stuff, right? Thank you. Well, so it's like okay, so you pay eight dollars a month, and you get two plus extra solo episodes or uh, Tasha and Dave episodes, like yep. stuff that's like personal. Like really, if people like you know, it's good good content, but stuff that you know we're not going to let our family or anyone else listen to unless they open their wallets, and then and then a fucking comedy show, and and it's the best part is it's like these are comics that have been on the Tonight Show that headline all over the country. Like these are comics that we're all out here not not sometimes we don't give ourselves the credit, not me me personally, but like we've been out like like last show we had comics that had combined like a hundred. I did the math; they had to combine like a hundred years of experience. Between eight comics. Really? You know what I mean? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, we had some fucking... And then... So so what I was going to tell you, if you're available... Uh, here's, I'll give you two options. Do a spot on the April show or host the March show. I hate hosting, so I'll do You don't want to host? Okay, do the April show then. I'm probably out of town anyways in March. I are you, where, where are you for um, St. Patrick's Day? March 17th, next Sunday. I'm in San Francisco. Okay, so you're not even here. Yeah. It's going to offer you to headline. Well, you can't know. What are you doing in San Francisco? I'm gonna, you're going to let me headline this show? No, I was just kidding. Oh. Not that there's like a specific headliner, but I, I don't know if I'm going to host. I hosted last month and I wanted to do like a proper set, but I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might host. I'll do it in April. Do it in April. Yeah. I don't have a date yet, but yeah, do it in April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. What venue are you at? It's Like I said, it's at the, the fourth one. It's a 30 yeah. seater. It's it's intimate. It's at noon on Sundays. That's our thing. 11 it's 30, afternoon? 1130 a.m. is oh, when we shit. say we start. We start at noon, but people show mm-hmm. up and then they have the whole rest of the day to do their mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. I can't. T- listen, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I've never had a show. In all of, let's say all of California at least, it were probably ever where people were that excited and happy and fortunate to be there. They said it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They were like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Because it's 1.30 in the afternoon, they're wasted, and they had a good time. It's not, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you go out to a stand-up show, it's like 9 o'clock at night, you got a fucking thing in the morning. There's a whole thing behind it. This is like, dude, it's Sunday afternoon. Get your laughs in and start your week off right. I don't know. I th- and and the, and the fact that we were able to fill, like I had this one dude, uh, Flake, and he, and, he, and he didn't show up, and I was happy because we, ran, we didn't have enough seats for him. Like that's how, uh, like you're never on that side where like you're just, like, you've, like it's always like, oh, no one's going to be there, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no, no. People actually wanted to show up because you're not trying to like, it's not like a bad deal where it's like a $20 ticket plus like $15 overpriced drinks. It's like literally just Venmo us if you want to donate. We paid all the comics. And then like this show, it's only going to be five of us. So it's like, you know, you see these shows that have 15 comics on. I know this is boring Tasha to death. But like they have these stand-up shows where there's 15. I'm doing a show 
Saturday night in Huntington Beach. I'm doing a five minute set. Why would you go all the way down there for I'm five gonna, minutes? I'm gonna have to cancel it. I would cancel or get that. more time. Yeah, you can't. I go agreed down there for to that. it, and then he told me how much time it was. I was yeah, like, don't bro, do that. That's that's it, not awful. Is that a is that a four hour round trip? Like, I won't yeah. go to Northridge for like five minutes. Never mind. See, Huntington Beach, Jonesy. I need it. you to like help me out when it comes mm. to like negotiating what, my the power of no. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I literally yeah. didn't say no. You should have that book. Is right? that a book? I think it, it is. is. I think it is. The power of no. Yeah. Well, you've been doing it a long time. How many years? Stand up seven, but like S- only Im- seven. Improv. Why did I think you've been doing it longer well, than that? Well, acting and improv ten. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. you've been doing stand up. I've been longer. lying to women since I was like fifteen. Oh, so, so like that. Yeah, right. It's kind of like you gotta stand-up. lie to women. You gotta mm-hmm. tell them what they want to hear. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Here we go. This is a big change here. Tasha? A big shift. Not in the mood for this. All Jonesy, right. we. Is it better than the stand up talk though? <laughs> We what, what's worse? Here's what Tasha w- doesn't understand, and this is, and she has the she has the beauty. Like she's already like rolling her eyes. Tasha, you have the beauty. You have the. You got questions for me too, right? I have questions. Okay. <laughs> Tasha has the beautiful bliss to not understand what goes through a guy's mind before they approach her. This is a woman I'm sure who is, she gets the gist no, of it. No, she's never. She, and, and, and this is true for most women. You've never had to approach a guy at a bar. You've never had to worry if a guy wanted to talk to you or not. Sure, like you've had got things not work out or like people being it for the wrong reason. But for the most part. 100% of the time whoever you want to talk to wants to fuck you not true that's I'm telling you I'm not asking you for the most part Tasha you live in a world where like you're the commodity and it, and that comes with a lot of problems because like you don't like I get it like you don't get to know what a guy's intentions are like you're like something and people are trying to steal that from you whether it be like they want to be with you because you're a model or because you're this or that but like you have to like do you, do you not think of that when, like, a, do you not think of a guy's motives when he's hitting on you? Always skeptical. Exactly. Well, you you always think they are? No, I'm just, I... I oh, you don't think they are? In general, not just with dudes, oh. with people. I have, like, a um, pretty, like, uh, guarded, I guess. But like, I wait, I wait and watch and, and then figure out what's up. But Tasha, you know that's I mean? because guys want to fuck you on the base level. It doesn't mean they don't want to also have a relationship with you or, or whatever, but they want to fuck you. Like, they want to procreate with you on the reptilian level. You Are you trying to get at something? My point is that we don't have I that. Like trying to get a boner. If a, <laughs> <laughs> if a woman, women don't hit on us in the way where, like, we're skeptical of their motives. If a girl's hitting on me, I'm not like, oh, what does she want from me? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got nothing to offer her. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like... Like me, like men like we if if there's a wealthy guy or like a like in the celebrity world you'd have to wonder what someone's motives are if you're a powerful agent you'd have to wonder what someone's motives are but like it's just di- what I'm saying is it's different like you don't have to you don't have the you you just have to show up to the party you have to show up to the bar and then you get to decide which guy you want to spend your time on yeah we don't have that well, I, what I don't a lucky guy you are Davis what the end of this should we should learn about this. Well, no. The the, the point fuck is that she men spends have all her time with you. The point is that men have to develop a skill to break through the skepticism that women have. We have to not only show that we're a suitable match in the short term, but the long term. And that's hard to do when that's hard to do when you're in the in a creative so world. So you're saying we got it bad. I'm saying it's a different <laughs> challenge. It's a different it's a different yeah. skill set that men have to I love that. Why do I? Why is this coming off so hard for me to get out? But it's like it's a different skill set we need to have as like dudes to get it across to women that like. And so when I say like I've been lying to someone since I'm 15, what I'm saying is I've been, I've been like I I have to when I meet some if, if in my single days when I go out and meet someone at the bar or like want to talk to someone. There's all this they call it demonstrating higher value. There's all these things a guy has to do to show a woman that he's separating himself from the pack. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you, do you, I mean, like, do you feel like you do that? Do you, if you have to, like, go, you no, know what I mean? Like, well, I don't do that anymore because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, you're just over it. Well, I mean, I'm just going to behave naturally as I naturally would. And if that's, yeah, you're if you comfortable in your own skin. If you don't find that. But it doesn't mean you're not comfortable. Cool. It means like, you're not into that. Then it's like, look, okay. I'm not going to put up a. So, for instance, I had a situation where, uh, talking to this girl and I quickly not quickly but at, by the end of the night I could see she's she's one of these little dog little dog people 
got to have the dog around all the time. <laughs> okay. Was uh, her dog with her? The dog at the beginning of the night was not, but we had to go get the dog. It's like in her, <laughs> it's like in her fanny pack. You okay. just look down and notice. But it was more like she had been out all day and the dog had to be taken Well, how did you meet so her? I went with her f- to do that. Did you meet her that day? Uh, I met her at a comedy show. Okay. She said, Would you, let's get a drink after the so, show. But hold on. You demonstrated a higher value oh. by being a funny comedian on stage. I guess that's it. Good bless okay. you. Okay. Good bless uh, you. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> you, uh, we got to go. She's been, she hasn't been home. I just think we got to walk the dog. Okay. Well, then, you know, then uh, she lives far away, you know, over an hour drive in Orange County. And then there was discussion via text subsequently. Trying to get her to come up, she, you know, she might. She's like, I want to come up to visit you in L.A. sometime. And then, uh, but, you know, the dog had to come. And I was like, no, the dog can't come. She's <laughs> like, no, the dog has to come. The dog goes everywhere with me. Uh, the dog is my, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, emotional support? Correct. Animal? The dog is my emotional support and has to come. And so I... The, the 22 year old Jonesy would have said, sure, bring the dog up <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to deal with it. Well, thirties Jonesy is like, forget it. The dog ain't coming. <laughs> you're not coming. <laughs> <laughs> the dog ain't coming. You're not coming. You're not coming. You're not coming either. No, sir. I'm pa- here's, here's <laughs> not by I'm, her. At least here's what I'm passing up. <laughs> Super hot, 24 year old, very attractive, very, very attractive. Take the dog! Totally into me. No, Dave. No. Why? Not anymore. But then your ego's cock blocking you. No, because I'm, because this is what it's about. It's about me being me and only me. I'm not going to be something I'm not anymore. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to push down my dislike. Of having a tiny dog around at all times. Okay, so you just actually, to get laid. So you actually don't I'm like the dog. I'm not pushing that down anymore. You didn't. You're, it's not about the dog. You it's didn't a, like the dog enough to not get laid by this hot younger chick. <laughs> it's see, but when it's the idea of the dog. It's so like now, this yes. extra annoyance that he Correct. doesn't want to have. All Tasha's the time. got a 55 pound dog. I got to put up with. My dog doesn't come everywhere with me and be annoying. But I got to walk your dog three times a day. That's what I got to do for your dog. But isn't it our dog now? I well, <laughs> it is until she's mad at me. Then she's like, hey, get off my dog. Uh, <laughs> so my point is now I'm, I'm, I'm to the point now where I'm just being myself. And look what it's saving me. This would have been a lot of wasted time to have this girl come up here with her dog. Or you fall in love with the dog because you adapt. Yeah, Listen, maybe it's a really no, sweet, no, sweet dog, dog, dog that people. you'll love. And then you'll no. want to bring the dog with you everywhere. No, no, Lap no. dogs suck, though. Because they do suck. here's somebody who there's something off with them. <laughs> <laughs> so Tasha's first of all, you're, the, you're, that's <laughs> Tasha's emotional support dog. That dog, I'm telling you. I'm not. But listen, if you're saying there's something off with Tasha, yeah, you're right. It's fine. <laughs> if Tasha said to you, I cannot go anywhere without my dog. A definitive statement. That's pathology. You're right. That's too far. Tasha, like yes, I actually try to far. convince Tasha to bring or, the dog. Or she says, it's my emotional support do- dog and has to go with me everywhere. Again, pathology. That's Because f- that's, it's not. It's not an emotional support dog. You are one of those crazy people that is saying it's an emotional support dog. So this is what we're dealing with. So now 20s Jonesy would have been like, she's so hot. I'm going to override all that because hot trumps crazy when you're 24 years exactly. old. Exactly. Painting that red flag white. So, I've, <laughs> so now 30s Jonesy is not having it. I'm being. I bet you 30s Jonesy's having a lot less sex, though. So 30s Jonesy is doing all right. And <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm, no, I'm no, having no. a, I'm, 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 I, I'm happy. I hear your point. I understand the dog metaphor as like, you don't want things to get in the way of who you are and your passion. And most women will find that sexy. Like, did she, was that a no go for her or did she crumble? And was she like, okay, fine. Fuck the dog. No, it's a no go for it her. It was a no go. She, she ain't coming. So was that it? You ever talked to her after that? Or was that she it? said something like, let's get a hotel room. I'll come out to LA and get a hotel room, and you know, and I just ended. I just stopped talking to her at that point. Jesus I'm not gonna get. Christ. I'm not gonna pay for a hotel room in the same city. I'm also paying rent. I mean, this is crazy behavior. Oh yeah, you'd have to get the hotel room. No, that's a no fly. Yeah. I mean, I would have to split it with her. I assume. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not doing that. And if she came up and was like, "I'm getting a hotel room," well, that's two hundred dollars right fucking, there. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. You're crazy. You're a crazy person. You're a crazy person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, she was also met you at a st- it's comedy called show. called Be a Reasonable Human Being, and you're not that. Yeah, well, compromise. You well, know. well, 
Tasha talks about compromise, but the only compromise we have is Tasha's way. And if I and if I fight that, she, you put That's up a not true. You put up a stink, a stink. That's, until it's I. It's just not true. Look at your life, babe. Do you think this is Tasha's way? <laughs> What's my life? Are you serious? What are you talking about? You know I'm going to be giving you a massage after this. Yeah, Babe, you better. I'm doing a bad podcast and my shoulders hurt now. <laughs> I'm like, Jonesy said, she'll be like, fuck Jonesy. You gotta go suck Jonesy's dick if that's what you want. I never said don't give your lady a massage. <laughs> I'm going to be that's, quoting. That's reasonable be... behavior. <laughs> no. If she's got a massage while she's also holding a small dog, that's weird. like, Tasha, <laughs> this is pathology. Thank yeah. you, pathology. pathology. Shut up your ass. Cheers, man. Well, look, I mean, hey, I, I agree with what you're saying. It, that's very superior man stuff. You ever read the book Superior Man? No, I never we gotta did. get you on it. We got to get you on it. It uh, uh, must be 930. Tasha's phone's going off. Go. No, I never that's read so about it. so loud. Where My buddy told me about that. He kind of was It's about staying life, on your but, path, yeah, but, yeah. but I do have to warn you. Like, of course, this girl sounded a little bit unhinged and, and, uh, and obsessive, but the point is with the Superior Man is like stay on your path, your creative goals, like your drive, who you are should be number one. And a woman should come after that. But it's really not like, oh, you're making me second. It's like, no, 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 honey. This is my path to life is what I need. Like for us, it's like for stand up and being creative and like and having that that itch that we have to scratch is more. Well, it's more about that. Like if you're not being true to yourself, then if you're not being your authentic self, then you'll never have a re- successful relationship. You have to l- meet somebody as they are. Yeah, yeah. Instead of like with a facade and or trying hard. trying to be something different or ch- or mm-hmm. doing something that makes you unhappy, like all of those things are so corrosive for a relationship. Oh, corrosive, I like that. That's word. a great word. Corrosive. That's a very good That's word. Very good. Yes, rustic. If anything, rustic. Rust. Well, yeah. rusty. I That's thought, a great okay. word as well. Thank you very much. Cor- wow, rust- you two have a high word. vocabulary <laughs> IQ. I'm very. Those were very our words of the week. We wanted to sneak in here. Oh. <laughs> Look. So I fe- I'm feeling. Exfoliated. Wait, uh, uh, <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> yes, that's the Guinness. Uh, exfoliating <laughs> you from the inside. Uh, infoli- exfoliate. Exfoliate. Anyway, so there is because imp- a lot of people they want to know the cheat codes of like how do I meet beautiful people and get laid and this and that. And the truth is, is you have to be c- like you only can attract who you are in the moment, right? So like if you're a, 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 attracting shittiness, people that ghost on you nonstop. It's it's our society doesn't want to victim blame. But you're not the victim if you're attracting shittiness. You're just attracting law of attraction. Everything's equal. You're attracting what you are. So like a lot of people want to want the cheat codes. How can I beg? How can I you know increase my ability to do one night stands or this or that? It's like well, you need to be the the best version of yourself. And the superior man teaches that. It, it, I mean, it talks about how like you just have to pursue your passion. That has to be that high energy of love. You know, love's like the strongest energy. If you love what you do, like say you're an architect and you just fucking love. If you meet someone out at a bar and they ask what you do and you just open up your heart and start explaining the ins and outs of everything and what you're, you know, people are going to be attracted to that. Now, not everyone's going to w- love an architect, but it's at least putting yourself on the highest pedestal you can be on. You know what I mean? And with co- as comedians. I mean, like a single comic who does well on stage is going to do well in the bedroom. It's just going to happen because you've got an audience of, say, say you do a show in front of 80 people. There's going to be a single good-looking female in the audience. She's going to see you. You're going to perform well, and she's going to be like, that guy's confident. And women are attracted to a guy who's got his shit going on. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, and I'm bringing this up because I have a few questions I want to ask you, but a lot is of times. Is this before they found out that you did the show for $35 and a hamburger? Which show is that? <laughs> I'll do a show for a hamburger. Wait, because you're like, cause they see that you're successful. They don't know. <laughs> no, they don't know. But they, yeah. but they see women love potential. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like Tasha. I feel like women and me, they love the way that I share uh, dark secrets and on com- stage. I you confess. Mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm very vulnerable on stage. Well, because they want believability, and they, I think that's attra- they, more they attractive than like, oh, that's a confident person, or that's a successful person. I think they're like, An damn, he just, person. he just shared like some deep, honest Someone shit. Someone who's cool with who they my are. My jokes aren't surface jokes. Like my jokes are deep. Uh, you know, see, I'm on the surface. My I'm jokes a, I'm are like, shallows. I'm not up there just to get a laugh. Uh, you know, doing a have pun. You, or have you shit. had shows where you didn't have a good set, but you got laid because of it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's money, right? Yeah, well, because of the what I'll do up there is, uh, 
It's very. It touches some people deeply. But you, but uh, touching them, we'd like to touch them deeply. That's the whole point. But <laughs> you, you're coming from a music world, right? You were in a in a band way back in the day. Yeah. Is yeah. it easier to meet women through stand up or through music? Oh, it was m- easier with music. Yeah. Well, sure. And why is that? Well, I don't know. You know what they say about musicians and comics? It's like. The drummer in the worst band gets more ass than the f- most hilarious national touring. Is comedian. that true? Did That's they what say they that? say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, it's kind of true. Well, yeah, I was yeah. in marching band, so that didn't really <laughs> apply. <laughs> <laughs> marching band doesn't apply. <laughs> you, didn't you get to fuck the girl that twirls the thing? No, no, <laughs> no. That's a, no, yeah. that's a false. You didn't? No. Oh, I thought you would have. I didn't get that memo. I, I wanted to get fuck the girl coupons. that twirled the thing. No, trust me, not in my band. <laughs> oh, no okay, okay. The, the, the hoop sure. twirlers were not. The hoop, twir- the hoop twirlers were out. No. Okay. They, listen, I'm not here to shame anybody, but that one was, no one was touching them. <laughs> they weren't touching them. What do you want from me? No, they wanted the cheerleaders, not the not the hoop twirlers. The point the point of what I was getting at is that people like so a couple years ago I started this series and I actually it was only for a, this private men's community that I was writing for. I started a series called Date Like a Comic, and I only did it so more people would find the podcast. But it turns out that like nobody checked out the podcast from this. Uh. So I was thinking it'd probably be better just to have like the Date Like a Comic be like a segment on the actual podcast where where, where I ask comics like to give advice on how people listening can take what we do. Cause we're in the battlefield, right? We're out there. The environment sucks. Most, you know, if, for anyone who's like only seen a comedy special, those are like paid audiences in a theater. It's bullshit. Total we're, bullshit. We're out there uh, doing stand up in front of a TV that's playing the, you know, the, the gymnastics during the Olympics. We're out there doing it on Monday night when the whole audience is Raiders fans and they don't want you to be talking because their game's on. Like it's one hostile environment after, I mean, Tasha's seen it. We did the show at the, in Lancaster where someone almost threw their lawn chair at, at, we're at an outdoor brewery they almost threw a lawn chair at the comic like fist fights and you know like Channing had to get you know the the gang whistled him off because they they almost wanted to kill him like I mean every comics have has a story where like they had to have that car literally like on and ready to go after the set because it's just not going to go well but that's a battle testing that like gets you to have the charm to like talk to people and not be afraid what you say and I think I really think women respect that when you can just be honest with them. Like over the summer, I was out with my brother Jameson in New York and I'm, I'm not trying to hit on people for, you know what I mean? But like you talk to people in the bars, you just get bored and you just start like bullshitting and that women find that more attractive than anything. I remember telling like, just ma- starting making fun of people. You know, I was like, I was there to wingman for Jameson, but I just started making fun of people and they wanted to talk to me because I was the asshole talking to them. And it's not all about women wanting an asshole. It's about women wanting like the truth and just people like talking shit and comics do that well. So I have questions for you that I think will be good for, um, I wrote, look, I wrote them down here. So my, same I'm nervous, simple questions, but this is for, for an audience of people that need to get laid. St. Patrick's you Day. You think I'm going to help people get laid? Well, we'll, we'll find see. out. Sexactuallypodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Let us know. Sexactuallypodcast oh, at gmail.com. Oh, but it's a know. lot of pressure, And if you man. do get laid, you better sign up for the Patreon. I feel like you owe us a few dollars. How, how does it... Okay, St. Patrick's Day. How can a guy on St. Patrick's Day leave a bar with a girl? Oh, my God. Jesus, man. Um, What's the play? How do you use that's like the holiday or the whatever the circumstance is to your advantage? I think as soon as you start talking about advantage and this and that, you're trying to get an angle, and angles come from a place of dishonesty. And so I think you're doing yourself a disservice for that. I think that's not how it, that's that's not going to do you good, man. It all has to come from a point of honesty. And so this whole angle, like how can I make it work in this bar, if you know. How can I get these girls? But you're girls coming from a the, place where, like, you're. You gotta just not care, man, and you get just gotta That's just. That's his advice. That's how you take home a girl on St. Patrick's Day. Is so not d- care. it's it's just pure be detachment. Cool, be yourself. Complete detachment. Not with, uh, you know, it's like don't put legs on a snake, man. It's you have to just like. <laughs> are these sayings? Or are you just uh, pulling this out of your ass? I like that. Uh, yeah, don't put yeah, legs yeah. on a snake. Just be yourself. Don't. Uh, yeah. Can I use that next time with Tasha when she tries yeah. to get me to vacuum it? <laughs> Baby, don't put legs on a snake. We're just <laughs> this don't is an old. You and Jonesy. <laughs> it's an old Zen uh, proverb. Uh, don't put legs on a snake. I have many of these I could share with you, um, <laughs> but they, a lot of people don't like. Well, them. look. Let me just say <laughs> this. It, okay, in the ins- Okay, assuming you detach and you don't give a fuck. How? Uh, 
as an example, I used to have a button. I I had two. I had one for New Year's Eve and I had one for St. Patrick's Day. The St. Yeah. Patrick's Day button said "Kiss me, I'm Irish." Right? That's simple. That's playful. That's okay. fun. And the New Year's New Year's one said something like "Kiss me, it's New Year's." <laughs> it was okay. like whatever the New Year's one was, <laughs> but it was a token that said. You can talk to me. Mm-hmm. I'm single. I'm out. You know what no. I mean? So you, this is some kind of, so you want me to, t- like, this is some trickery to get people I'm, to talk to you. Like, this is what they want? Your I'm listeners, looking they want for that? the spark plug. Well, if they just want to get, they, you're asking the wrong guy if you, they just want to get laid like that. I'm not interested in, in, in that. And I'm not interested in probing the depths of trickery to make this happen. <laughs> like, I <don't>, depths of trickery. <laughs> like, I don't. Like, I don't. I can't tell you, oh, well, if you wear a T-shirt that says this, people will open up to you. Or if you sit, here's the plan. If you sit at this spot But, at dude, bar, you got tattoos, so who are you sit, talking? Sit. Those tattoos probably got you, get you so many girls talking to you. I've been asked about them, yeah. There you yeah. go. Sure, trickery. Sure. Been, you shallow. That's not trickery. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put legs on this a worm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't some shirt I put on. This is my skin. It's natural. <laughs> so it's not trickery if it's etched into your body. Uh, so no, but that's a good. But your tattoos are like what in the in the in, okay. So like I'm not talking about some like sleazy seduction. I'm talking about well a one night stand at the end of the day. We're talking about someone who just wants to sh- fucking snag a girl from the from the bar. This is like a one night stand. Maybe this is, uh, or maybe this it's is just like, like or maybe it's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> when you say it like that, Tasha. Yeah, a beautiful relationship. You know, there has to be uh, there has to be dialogue. There has to be a good good dialogue it's hard to get this good dialogue at, at bars in big cities because well they're crowded obviously but this other thing that happens well for certainly st patty's they will be crowded and extremely noisy in a sunday it'll, it'll be very difficult to connect with somebody especially after they came it's to the stand-up show at 11 30 yeah. a.m in hollywood there's they're and then laughing. went out and then went out there yeah that's crazy and, and a lot of bars in la are very very noisy they play the music way too loud i don't that takes me if i was to say i have a game if I, I don't really have a, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like to say that I have this game, but my game, if it was to, if you were to say that, is communicating and sp- talking. The gift of gab is the gift that I've always had, and so <laughs> in these environments, my vagina is drying up. <laughs> <laughs> the gift of gab. <laughs> I hear, I understand what you're saying. All the bars in New York City, the bars in L.A., they, I can't. I, I can't connect with people at these places. I'm with you. Clubs? They're too no loud. way. It's too I, loud. I will never have enough money yeah. to compete with some fucking Persian guy. No offense. Oh, at so a club, I guess, I guess there's that. Service. Yeah, so I guess there's that too. Like, I'm not in that world. I don't know how that works. But if, I guess you need to be in the roped off area as well. Like that, there's that kind of shit. There's levels of this well, stuff. Well, I get, I get so, I got, I get so, if I posted this on Facebook, I would get so much shit. Yet nobody writes in and tells me I'm wrong because I think they hear my context. Women are attracted to power. Men are attracted to attract, men are attracted to physical beauty. I believe at first, I think women are attracted to power. Power comes in different ways. Women can be attracted to a, a funny guy on stage. That is a lot of power. A comic on stage is, wields a ton of power. With mm-hmm. your own hands, your brain, your mouth, you're able to fucking control a room of hundreds of people at a time or not but that's that's the goal and then other ways are power or wealth like oh that guy's got a lot of money he's in a roped off area at a club some women are attracted to that type tasha i imagine you're not as attracted to a man with with the wealth as you are to uh, other powerful skills because you're with me (laughs) and you're not with the fucking persian guy that tried no offense to persia or whatever but like you're do you know what i mean like there's different forms of power there's different forms of like social what's your power my power is that is that i've talked my way back into this relationship throw a nice curveball. I can throw a, a bait on yeah the, but you know you talk about like oh I don't you know you said like oh I don't have I don't I don't really think about my game but then you say you have the gift of gab like you know yeah. it your power isn't and no offense because you're like me it's not your strength or your cutting you've got good you've got nice eyes and you're a good looking dude right but like you're, and I'm, I'm not trying to blow you here but like your power is you on stage it's your ability to crush it at karaoke and you know you got a good voice right you've got like I know these things about Jonesy over here that's your I power. I think my power is intelligence is what I think. My right. Power but is. In a, what's yeah. more intelligent than a comic who yeah, writes, yeah. directs and acts out his own sure. his own play on stage? Yeah, yeah. What's your house in Harry Potter? Uh, oh, fuck this. I don't know. I don't know. You're not a Harry Potter? Guy? Good. I don't know. I don't know. Tasha just started to want yeah. to fuck you if you gave her the right <laughs> answer, but you didn't. Um, my, my whole thing is like connecting with someone. So, yeah, sure. I have the gift. I can I can talk. You know, if if I'm alone with a woman and there's something go- and I'm st- and, and I can just talk to her, I could talk her 
the pants off her. Sure. I know you've how got, to do that. You've got enough but not, of that's a... not what I'm using the gab for. I'm using the gab for finding out if if there's a connection there, if there's something else. You know, what is their worldview? What is their philosophy? What do they think about things? But, when if, we're talking, but if I had to imagine something, you, I'm not you would be able to other I'm sure you would be able to find fifty different ways to connect with someone. Whether sure, it's th- I'm, I'm sure you I can could connect with people from all different backgrounds, exactly. economically different yeah. ages and stuff, but like that's that that's helpful in that it it lets me un- lift the veil and see who I'm really dealing with, and then do I really want to spend any more time with this person? Yeah, you're being selective. Uh, it allows me to be selective if I, if I chat. with my, my chat skills allow me to kind of get things out of them that let me know, is this going to go any further? Like, not sexually, but like a, yeah. in a, on a connection, you know? And I, I, think t- like I can't be with someone who is just not a... a you know, I don't addicted know. Addicted to, to their dog. You uh, don't want someone to take thinker. To I want someone who's thinks about the big picture and you know, not as just not you can't be a, you know, you can't be focused. It's, I I don't like small brain people like you 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 like material things. You like you know That's the, for your twenties. You fuck somebody that you're attracted not, to. I'm not into this. I I wanna know I mean, are you looking like long term? Are you looking for like your soulmate? I w- it would be nice to find someone like that. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I would like that. Yeah. Yeah. Why, sure. who's, why not? Why know? not? Why wouldn't I? But I think. I think what I'm getting at is this: most men want. Uh, I think the biggest problem, like they said, the biggest fear in the world is public speaking, right? And oh, yeah. and what's a single guy supposed to do to meet women when the louder, stronger, wealthier guy is out there? you know, getting in their face because we've all, we've all been to bars in those environments, even when they're set up for us. So it's like a quiet place. That's like, all right, I'm not at a club. So like, yeah, for me, so I'm single, I'm not at a club. I ain't ain't happening. I'm at a bar with a dance floor. There's a dance floor in the back. There's a bar in the front where you can actually talk to people. And if you select someone you like, then you could do less talking and kind of just like feel their vibe. But that's, that's, that's what I'm going after. But also there's just, it's a fucking crazy situation. Like, Tasha, wouldn't you agree being single is a very tough time? I mean, that's why everyone's resorting to the online dating, which fucking sucks. I mean, if, like, it's better, if you have the balls to be single and go out to a bar, you'll have far better success than online dating because people are seeing you for who you are. Whether, it, even if it is rejection, they're at least seeing you for who you are versus, like, online dating, you filter it to, to your best version of yourself. And it's like, and then they meet you in person. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get that initial human read when you're online. But it's tough because, like, you're, you, you've you got a decade plus probably worth of experience talking on stage and, and, like, and pushing past these fears. Most men don't. So what I'm asking is, like, how can guys not create a cheat code but know, but trust that if they show up and, like, can break the ice with a girl that they'll be able to, like, connect? Do you know what I mean? Because that's all you're looking for is to find a, a woman that you connect with. All right. Well, then maybe something like this has to happen. You break the ice with someone, and then you just say, hey, I'd like this to go further. I'd like to get to know you. I'd like to sp- talk to you. But this is kind of a crazy environment. So, um, you know, not tonight because obviously it's a holiday, St. Patty's Day. But, like, I'd like to meet you outside of this in a place that we can kind of get to know each other. Would you be down with that? I'm melting in his eyes right now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see I've melted into his yeah. eyes? Something like that. But this is... But may- although maybe... In, so another option <laughs> is to uh, to uh, employ your listeners, if they can, to avoid the bar club and uh, try to go to a St. Patrick's Day party. A house party. Oh, a house is, party would be nice. Yeah, that's a little easier of a place Because that implies to trust, because you both know the same pr- the person Oh, host. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't even thinking of that, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. And it also, trust is important with ladies. Yeah, and it's usually an environment that you can actually get to know somebody. You know, yeah, you no, can actually speak to them at a house party, you, yeah. I mean, depending on whose house it is. And I mean, you, have s- you have a mutual friend uh, yeah. to break the ice with. Oh, do you know Tony? You know, it's, there that, you go. I mean, it lends credibility, I guess. But that's the hardest yeah. part is yeah. the ice breaking. I, I think is the hardest part because if a, I feel like if someone's into you, they're gonna let you know right away. If you if you're breaking the ice, they're gonna they're gonna get out of the conversation. Oh, I gotta go, th- you know, I gotta go to the bathroom. Like, there's a million ways to get out of the conversation, right, Tasha? But like, if you wanna like, if you're actually intrigued by someone, you, there's a million ways to stay. Like, I, there's been plenty of times where you you know I've met someone in my single days, and like they I didn't think they were into me at all, and then they just like stuck around, and they were like, you know what I mean, and. The best, you know, like in sales, 
the best thing you can do is the longer you're with the potential client, the, the higher the odds are that the sale's going to happen. This is an argument for stalking? Well, it, <laughs> it, it's not stalking if they show up. You can't put uh, legs don't on Don't chase a, them around. Don't put legs she on turns a around, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, in, in sales, you put the product in their hand, they're going to buy it. Don't put your dick in their hand. Not okay. yet. We're not there yet. But right, Tasha, like, aren't you going to let a guy know through a million physical sort of descriptions if you're not into the conversation? Like, do you, you, you must get approached and hit on still when you're out and about doing your thing. Yeah, but the, what you m are referring to, I think, would just be like signals, like little signals, like not available, not interested, whatever. But yeah, there's lots of signals when you are interested. Maintained eye contact, you know, furthering the conversation, asking questions, not letting it be one sided. To touch? Even if it's Maybe. like. Maybe. Did you fucking. That's you know what like, I mean? Like, that's when you know it's like real attraction. That's like a sexual thing. Whoa. Yeah. I feel like when somebody does like a shoulder touch or whatever, that's like. Woo. Give it. Okay. Jonesy, Tasha, have a moment. Just. Jo Jonesy, talk to Tasha. But Tasha, give him just the. What's the first physical touch? What happens? You're, you've already tensed up. Yeah. Show me what happens. Like what? Oh, like you like touch There it is. Shoulder. So just a si so just yeah. a simple. But and you're you're doing a physical. It's a physical mm -hmm. act, and then you're waiting for them to respond with something. But what if you're? I don't know. I'm a kind of a touchy Italian person, and so sometimes I just like I'll talk to somebody. And I'll just I'll touch them or pat them on the back or like. But you don't I, find that very intimate. I I don't. To me, it's just i'm well, like that with everybody but here's i don't, what, I don't uh, it's all about escalation so you're you, saying yes. all right tennis i served and then you're and then you're backing away you know yeah, what yeah yeah. Okay, you know, yeah 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 that i'm very much like that it's it can, it can be very you annoying don't start down here no i don't know you go you go no, yeah yeah you go, ah, but and it's not just a, a woman i'm talking to it's my buddies it's everybody yeah. strangers even you uh, blow them uh, after. i kind of touch them i touch people i hear you and it's a uh, trust thing it, it's, it's a bad thing i've had people tell me hey i don't no, know no, it's stop touching but me. it's and then hands like, up it's like this is men, a I've had men tell me can you just not touch me again i used to be yeah. a big hugger and then i moved yeah. away from it because i realized like that's you know i i, I literally in high school i hugged everybody and then some people were like <laughs> you were most just, likely to <laughs> you were yeah. most likely to hug Gosh, your way fun. For, through I, life and it's again i'm not suggesting people hug but i'm saying you know you meet someone and you go ah oh, and you go jesus christ bang bangles you're a bangles fan i'm not slapping you i'm touching you you're bangles and then you go oh okay but you're and then it oh shit all right and then it's a whole fucking and yeah, that sounds yeah. crazy to say i feel like i'm not trying to offer a seminar here but it's like it's it's like these are the things that like you just got to talk you just got to be present with someone and then read them and yet we're just investing in this world where we get online and none of that happens that's my problem is that none of that is happening but it's online. not your problem because you're in a, a successful but it relationship. bothers me because what it what it does is success. you don't have to deal success. with that whole, no, when, okay. so when's so the last time you, you had to be on one of those apps uh well five plus years ago yeah we've, been, so we've been together five I, years i would it's safe to say you're living the good life but the man. problem is that it's people not a good place to be got, people go on those apps and then it's the worst. And and then and then and the, and this is the thing I've always learned is if you get rejected, even in person, you're not necessarily being rejected for who you are. You're being rejected for you rejected for your approach. You're being eject, rejected because you're a creep who decided to dance behind a girl and not say anything. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> you know right? what I mean? But like you're not. You don't like you're not. You're not going up saying, "Oh my gosh, so nice to meet you." Like, are you a are you in any, or like whatever the thing is. You're being rejected because you're being a creep. And even though in your head you're a nice guy and you have the best, you know, but to her, you want to wear her like as a skin suit because women, women are very much, you know, intuitive with like when yeah. a guy's being, and we meet, I mean, even as comics, we meet people all the time that after a show, all they want to do sometimes is shake your hand and say, Hey, good set, blah, blah, blah. But they'll just stand next to you. And it's like, you're being fucking creepy. But in their head, they're altruistic. They have good intentions. Yeah, they don't realize what they're doing. I don't yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, question number two. Ooh, I love okay, this. Okay, because the first very, one didn't very go exciting. well. The first one. Uh, okay. What was wrong with it? I gave some. No, uh, I didn't give the advice that your your listeners wanted. No, because go I, to a house party. That's, look, that's pretty good advice. Well, you said you don't like the whole like strategy, but I think the str I think you do have strategy. I just think well, the strategy was to tell them, hey, I'd like to speak with you outside of this chaotic environment and be real with you. I can't be that way right now because my face is painted fucking green and I'm <laughs> drinking green beer. <laughs> like, let's be real, this isn't the place for that. Like, your uh, your listeners should take that advice. Is that your first line to a girl? That's <laughs> pretty heavy. I'd like to talk to you outside of here, but I'm you know you're just fucking dressed like green <laughs> braveheart. <laughs> just fucking. 
get Irish that curse. That's like green, green Braveheart. <laughs> They'll never take on Frida. <laughs> You're chugging in us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a crazy place What's for that. What's the first line? If you, okay, uh, let me break this down. You walk into a bar or any environment and sure. you see a woman. Yeah, what's my first line? That, that it's you, always that the same. Do you like short guys? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, you don't count as short. <laughs> sure I am. 5'6". You're five six. Yeah, you 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 wear it very tall. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't think he was five. I would have gone five nine. Now's the time I want you to be a hugger. <laughs> do you have those squatty potty heels I on? Is that do you I wear squatty this? potty heels on? <laughs> <laughs> you got squatty if I, potty. If I kiss uh, sparkly platform <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I always, I've always said this. I've always thought that the women's biggest problem is guys' height. Ver- more so than their hairline or whatever. I think women are very like height um, sensitive. Do, uh, do you do you see that? Um, I, I really don't know. I don't. What do you think? Is it I don't know. I mean, I think in general, like you were saying, that women are attracted to power. I think yeah. women are um, very protective of themselves, their future offspring, the future. That's what they're thinking about. That's why they're going after a very powerful guy or they whatever can, they know they can make some that they'll be offspring. protected that they'll be taken care of and i think that's the same thing with height like girls want someone who's pr- who could protect them in a fist fight no, I this don't gives know. me an opportunity to slip in one of my jokes <laughs> about how i have a nut allergy and it's a major cock block yeah well it's a sign of genetic genetic weakness your nut allergy, a is a sign allergy? Of yeah. no woman out there is like you know who i want to mingle my dna with that fellow, I mean, I that guess fellow that, that would can apply be destro- to like anybody that, with glasses. <laughs> that You're fellow that can be destroyed by a croissant. <laughs> <that guy. laughs> Tasha, you curb stomped his I know, body. it's okay. I see, this is what I'm going to do. I'm very used to heckling. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. It. I knew you were working towards the croissant line. <laughs> <laughs> Tasha had to get her shit in. <laughs> Let the motherfucker. No, I'm kidding. No, that's fine. That's fine. But as a comic. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, I've said 0.2 words <laughs> on this entire podcast. She has and said I'm very little. Shit no, Tasha. She has said very little. Listen. I you probably need to ha- you probably need to have like, a Guinness so you'll get the balls I to interrupt. I could have easily not been here for this podcast, and if you had told me you were just going to talk about Patreon and jokes and getting laid the whole time, I think I could have excused myself. Hey, honey, for the audio listeners, I'm touching her. Hey, honey, you're where would you you're, go? You're a super valuable member of this podcast. You do, you want to don't you want to be on a podcast? Talk with about me. the Patreon. I'm trying to get us Turks and Caicos. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to get us. Uh, no, I just as a comic, I possess that extra tool where i knew he was working towards a punchline and you it, sorry i didn't know but she had a, I think she had, a, she I, I had think very be, important a very important funny, thing to say i think it would be funny if you reset the punchline with the respect of the silence <laughs> i don't us. think it would There's be gonna be dead please. silence i don't need room. this set up again please just the punchline <laughs> oh the punchline the punchline is this uh no woman out there is saying you know who i want to mix my dna with that fellow that can be destroyed by a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> Still funny to me. We're gonna make a warrior, me and that guy. <laughs> <You> and <laughs> then I say, <laughs> and then I say, you know, for the hell of it, I'm like, hell of it, I'm gonna get together with a woman who's lactose intolerant and has a gluten allergy and make the weakest baby you've ever seen. You're like Jonesy, your baby died at day 18. What happened? Uh, she touched a blanket and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It was the weakest human ever. I like it. Yeah. And croissant's a funny word. Croissant's a funny it's word. It's got a nice, funny, hard. And seat. they occasionally have nuts in them. There you go. Well, that would be called. That's uh, what's that called? The almond, almond, almond croissant. croissant. Oh and, uh, man, I would love an almond croissant them. right Everybody now. Everybody loves them. Can Tasha you make had to me give a up. Gluten free croissant. She Tasha's on all. Look at look at all those pills she's on. Those are all Lyme disease pills. She I can't thought have, that was all for the dog. No, that's all Tasha every day. All that. Lyme disease. Yeah. yeah. No gl- no gluten. So where did you get it and from? No alcohol. A tick. <laughs> <laughs> and you had the bite marks. The, those triangular bite marks. No. That's kind of like like the rash thing. The bullseye rash is what they call it. But that is only like it happens to like 10 percent of cases or something. Most people don't. even. So what are the other signs? Well, you just end up with symptoms. If if you never realize that you got bit and you never see if you seek treatment right away, if you get on antibiotics right away, you treat antibiotics to kill it. Yeah. Any antibiotics. If it's right away. If it's right away within the first two weeks. Doxycycline. Mm. Why do you think you have Lyme? You Did you lie. just get bit by a tick? I had someone call me that I had slept with and said, uh, I have Lyme disease. Do you have Lyme disease? They said they had Lyme disease. Yeah. No, it doesn't transfer that. I'm not, I, mean, I look, know now, but 
I looked up these symptoms because I was like, I think you could technically. And I, I actually had some of the symptoms, like a back pain is one of the symptoms. I had that. And there was another one, I think, I don't know, fatigue. That's the problem is everything's so, a symptom. So Every yeah, shitty feeling. They call feeling. it like the great imitator because yeah. the symptoms are so varied. Yeah. And uh, you always attribute it to something else. Like my symptoms, I would attribute to like my hormones or like uh, working out too hard or whatever. Like yeah. I would kind of brush them off as something else. Because they are very varied. Um, well, I called my doctor. I said uh, right after this phone call, I go, "Hey, someone called me, said that this is what's going on." I'm like, "Can I get a l- test for Lyme disease?" And they're like, "That test is very expensive." So w- I would say call a disease center and ask them if it's transferred via sex before we do this. And I called, and they're like, "No, yeah, no transfer." Well, but I still thought I might have the symptoms, and then I looked up, and then it was like rash. I'm like, "Ah, that rash. I don't have that rash, so forget it." Well, you. I wouldn't worry about it. Because yeah. look, I mean. So no. what, is, what, 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 how would I know I had it? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You'd Until only your symptoms it. got bad enough that you were like, what the fuck's wrong with me? And then you go searching. I mean, you're, you're actually lucky that your doctor even said like that tests were available. Because most places, the testing methods that they use are like ridiculously outdated. They're like from mm-hmm. the 50s. And in order to get like a proper test, it does co- it cost $500. Yeah, they said it was expensive. I for yeah. sure thought Tasha was a hypochondriac. I was as nice as possible. I was like, "All right, if you want to spend the seven hundred dollars to pee in a cup or a thousand or whatever it was, five hundred. And then, and then, and then it came back positive. The tests come back. And here's what we did: we we go over there by the dresser, we open the thing, and I'm 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 just I'm just excited to be like, "Fuck, you're wrong, bitches." And then she's like, "Had the worst kind of." And I go, and then we hug and when did this happen? This is six months ago, right? No, it's been almost a year. It will be a year at the end of this month. You know, you don't have it no more. What? It's gone, right? It's very, no. it's very hard to get rid of. This, but it's this girl that told me about it, she did a, a an antibiotic regimen that was, what did she say? It was the equivalent to, uh, if you have, what's that one you get when you go? Oh, malaria. She took this, she did the same regimen. She's, she's on the anti-malarial like stuff. I have that too. So she said, and then she was on that for well over two weeks. It was long and she's, it's gone now. Well, look, I mean, Tasha's got, uh, right, the longer you have it, the kind of more d- dug in it gets. But she's got the best doctor on the East Coast. She's doing all the things. You're on it's the tough. West Coast. No, but that's the thing. You oh, got to okay. go to the East Coast. You got it. New England, I mean, you know, the doctor's in D.C., but Lyme, Connecticut is where this shit started, right? That's where they found it first. Is that true? Yeah, Lyme, yeah, Lyme I mean, a lot of doctors out here will tell you that Lyme doesn't exist in California, which is not true. They're finding, this, they're finding ticks on the beach, bro. This shit's like it's out there, and it oh, leads I to Parkinson's. I've seen ticks out here before. It leads to a lot of crazy things neurologically, and it's important, you know. I've but but we're going like we're doing, bro. We're taking celery smoothies. We're doing it right. I mean, like I, I if there's any way I can be more supportive, I want to be. But it's like I I want to make it so that you know, like whenever you're dealing with an issue, like with it, with your spouse, or your partner, you have to like try to be the fucking strong thing because they can't be like, they've got, they're battling it. So it's like, I'm not trying to negate her issues and be like, Oh, you're not really tired. I'm not trying to be like, Oh, you're not like, you're faking it, but I'm trying to be like, Why would you, but it's also hard because I'm kind of trying to be like, if I'm tired or exhausted or whatever, well, I'm, I'm not going through what she's going through. You know what I mean? So like I have the empathy, but also we're you're doing all the things that the experts say you need to do like like how would you score me am i doing all right yeah baby you're doing really it's well. hard yeah he's doing good he's he's doing really well like oh, it's lime nice. rage tell Pretty me about lime rage no. fucking lime. Oh. It's been super tough. tell me about lime rage after you've had a lime ricky <laughs> you ever have a lime Bro, ricky jonesy no. she's trying to get rid of me She's trying ah. to she's trying to cut me out of this tv show Maybe she's and trying to give you lime i just disease. keep writing myself back into the episodes you know what i mean like it's I don't feel like we're always on the same page uh, consciously. Like, I, uh, you need another beer? Yeah, sure do you do. Last one. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Right, yeah, here we go. But, like, uh, I feel uh, a lot of good happens at the 80th minute, by the way. this is We're at the 80th minute for the... Damn, it's been that's that long? That's when good shit happens. Oh, that makes me happy. But um, I... Uh, what happened at the 80th minute? Oh, we got into Lyme disease somehow. <laughs> yeah, kinda, this we podcast took a ma- strange turn. I loved it when you brought up malaria. <laughs> so... <laughs> How did you but go from St. Patty's Day to Lyme disease? I don't know. The color green is, <laughs> the, is the common thread. Hey, there you go. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a different spelling of Lyme, but I like the wordplay. Uh, Thank you, sir. You. It's, it's, it's I felt like I was left on an island back there. Perhaps an archipelago hey, if you're keeping score at home. <laughs> and they are. They certainly are. <laughs> I, it's, I, I've got to, 
I've had to convince Tasha to stay dating me. And I don't I don't want I don't like sales. I is don't that when is that when you you bought a gun? <laughs> Handcuffs. They're not for kinkiness. They're like, for <laughs> Girl, you ain't going nowhere. But it's for me it's about like riding out these like we're like a small boat and the hurricanes come. Sure. And it goes, Okay, look, I know if we ride out this storm we're gonna be good. But it's also like Tasha, fifteen different times you you've given me the, the option to leave. It's every three months. I know, okay. Every and it's not like oh her period. Or, I'm not trying to play it like that. But like, why do you even? Why why are we still together? Wow, this comes out of my episode or every episode? Because <laughs> I love you to death in all this. Is this, like, is this a common thing? What's going on here? <laughs> every three episodes, we like to bring you. I just want to know, <laughs> Tasha, why are you still with me? <laughs> You, I mean, bro, if Whoa. I, I'm telling you, I'm not saying this to be a dick. I'm saying this because I believe in us. I believe in what we have is worth, you know, like, I, I, and that's I why never, I'm here, Tasha, to sing to you. Everybody needs a little time away. That's the song you want to write, Dave? Please. I heard her say from each other. Dave just brought me here to sing keep to going. you, to keep, keep you going. together. <laughs> Even lovers need a holiday. <laughs> I don't want YouTube to pull this episode down because it's so close <laughs> to the original that they just said. Tasha, your turn. Uh, what are we doing? About what? Do you believe this shit's for real or what? Because I do. Is this, yeah, is the, I mean, is this three beers, like, Dave? What's going on here? I've, I've tried my best to get rid of you, but you keep sticking around. So I but can, I, can I ask what you did to get rid of him? Packed up a shirt. You, you, you packed it up? That was, a, that was a year ago. Do your listeners know? I think so. I think I've talked about it. Yeah? You packed it up? Packed it up. Where'd you put it in? I put it in the hall. Like a suitcase? Duffel bag. Oh, duffel yeah. Bag. All of, yeah, boxes and And then out in the hall, did you put a note out there too? Like, uh, uh, you re- know what I did to win her back? Read this note and abide by the commands no, I came in. Within. I had keys. She, you came she in? couldn't change the locks. You that stepped fast. over your stuff yeah. and you walked right in. I didn't know next time to change the locks. I brought, you know what I did? I brought Little Caesar pizza. This is before she. This is when she could eat gluten. All right. You and brought a Little Caesar pizza. Well, That's actually, you not got right away. But the point, the point is this: is that way look, to your heart <laughs> look, it doesn't with a Little Caesar's pizza. If she has an, if she has a problem, I don't go. Well, look, you, you'll get over it. It's not like that. I'm not like stone cold, but I'm also like I understand your problem. But then I go look. If your problem is you don't feel loved, I'll tell you I love you immensely. So the you'll, fault you'll step is, up your um. But I just go the fault. Your declaration of love game. Exactly. The fault okay. is not that is I that don't what, love is that you what enough. The problem was? It's not that I don't love you enough. It's that you're not receiving it in the way that I'm giving it. So we need to tinker in a mechanical way the way I'm giving you my love, and that yeah. happens once in a while. Sometimes That's I'll like. Do you ever study NLP? Ex- wait, I, I feel like uh, the, communi- Aiden, the Aiden communica- Park brought the communi- this up last episode. The communication is the response you get. The, your communication to her is the response you get. But it doesn't mean that you don't have the right intention. So, like, I'm not saying but that... But it, it doesn't... Yeah, that's right. Well, so you can augment your communication method. Wait, hold you, on. Let's, you, okay, wait. I, want you, I want you to break this down for me. So, neurolinguistic so, programming. That's okay. right. That's so, so, so this is one of the tenets of neurolinguistic neurolinguistic program, programming. They teach you your the, your communication is the response you get. So I want her to understand that I love her. Okay. So I say I love you in whatever way that I say it. Not very often. Whatever. She's not getting it. I'm I'm not getting the response that she's. So you have to change the way you say it. I still love her. It's still my fault. That sure. This isn't happening. I my communication needs to be altered. You my, can't blame the other communi- person yeah, for yeah. not receiving. I it. can't go. Well, I told her. Yeah, because it's not about intention; it's about perception. But so if she's not. It's like well, it's love well, your intention. If they're the, not speaking your language, the intention. How many the intention is important because the intention, if it's genuine, it'll keep you trying. It'll keep you trying a new form of communication. But what you if can't, what you can't you, do, if what you can't do is chance. be like Tasha. I told you. Tasha, I tell you twice a week that I love you. Like, I don't understand. This is not, in other words, the ball's in your court now. If you're not getting it, that's on you. I'm telling you twice a week. That's, you, you know, no, the meaning of your communication is, 
plain and simple. She's not getting it. That means you're communi- You're not communicating. You, in your mind, you're like, I'm communicating it by doing this. And you might come from a family where you only say you love you once a year. So you go, sure. if I tell you this so, twice a month. Right. So in your <laughs> world, that's a valid intention, and that's valid communication from the world you came from. Irish family, not a lot of love going on. I don't know. What, I'm not trying to paint a picture of your childhood, <laughs> but I know how Irish families are. I've read Frank McCourt. I know the deal. I've read my James Joyce. I know the fucking deal. I have Irish relatives. I know the deal. You can't put a leg on a snake. <laughs> Is that not Irish <laughs> or what? So in that world, you're, the meaning of you communicate, you're, you know, I love you once a month. Is Wow, wow, you're really blown. Easy with the love, you know? <laughs> yeah. But in other worlds, that's not the case. So you have to augment your your uh, your form of communication. But so you, that, but that this all comes down to like she's also got to communicate. I'm not getting that from you. And then you got that. Oh, okay. So you're not getting that from me. Okay. Just so it's not your fault that you're not getting it. But it's also not my fault that you're not getting it. I'm gonna change this because where I come from, people get it this way. But where you come from, people get it this way, you know, and then you, you make that adjustment. That's why you got to speak to each other uh, constantly. And a lot of people don't do this. They don't tell they don't tell you what they need. They don't tell you what they need in the bedroom. They don't tell you what they need in life. And so we kind of go around guessing and then spelling it out. How many relationships didn't get off the ground floor that were good? good yeah, that, that, I'd that imagine all they need to do is t- yep. like like tinker I'm their carburetor sure. in the fucking thing. Yeah, yeah but I, I think that like tons in the beginning there's not a lot of investment and that's just you know that's just part of it i think also what happens in the very beginning is this that honeymoon phase kind of uh, skews the data you know what i mean so in the honeymoon phase it's all love no matter what you do it's like it just all seems to work right but then you know that all goes away and and the real work has to be put in you know what's interesting is because we started as friends i don't think the honeymoon was was like painting red flags white. I think the I think when we started dating, I knew I loved you at a at a level that was so like strong that I was able to accept all the rejection that I was getting from the way I shared love. I told her I loved her, and she said thanks. And I, that doesn't even <laughs> bro doesn't even bother me. Didn't even phase me. Really? Literally, I love you. A, yeah, thank Put you. it there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, f- f- fist pump. Done. <laughs> <laughs> we had just started dating. Did it, that might crush my world. No, we were like a couple months into dating, but it didn't okay. bother me. And I told her too. I was like, look, like I, I'm not trying to make this big weird thing. I'm just like, I love you. And you know what I mean? Like I, I almost said it in a way it was like, don't even bother responding. I'm just letting you know if like uh, if like I was to die on a highway leaving here that you knew. Like, of course, come on. Like to me, it just I made it clear it wasn't an important word to me in in this sense that's like, oh, the 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 crazy four letter word. No, no, no. That fuck. She, and she said it soon thereafter. It was fine. Whatever. But it's I had that that feeling and that conviction conviction that I wouldn't have had a few years earlier where I was like, no, 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 no. I understand you're a good soul. I understand you mean well. But still to this day, Tasha will say whatever she could imagine to be the most hurtful things in the world to get me to react, to, to prove to her that I'm not the right guy. And I'll just be like, no, 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 baby, I love you. It's okay. I understand. And I'm not a beating, I'm not like a punching bag. I'm not just taking it like for the sake of taking it. I'm saying, I understand that like we trigger things in each other that are like violently sort of like, like we unearth some fucking shit in the permafrost of our world. You know Damn, what I mean? Permafrost. Right? That's very scientific. When the permafrost melts, the fucking Spanish flu is coming out. The, the shit from the fucking pre humanity is coming mm. out that our immune system is not ready for. So I know that, like, I'm not throwing holy water on her and expecting her to react in a normal way. I'm saying, babe, I love you. I'm sticking with you and I'm working my ass off to understand the way that you absorb your love but i'm letting you know if you need me to go build a wall every day brick by brick that's what i will do it's just still five years later where i have days or weeks or even months where like i'm so busy working at my craft so i can bring home a reward that you might think i'm neglecting you and i'm just you know what i mean like like that's the that's that's the whole crux of the of it is that i want us i have the same goals as her i want to travel the world i want to own a home i want to have a dog plantation you know what i mean where we just fucking raise basset hounds and like our biggest problem is that the basset hounds keep fucking each other and we got more basset hounds i want that to be the problem Mm -hmm. but like my answer to that is i need to get better at my craft my stand-up my 
Patreon, my all my things that I do so that like that's how because I know if 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 I just stay at home every day and just like say, I love you, I love you, I love you, that to me isn't gonna bring home the bacon. So there's a balancing beam of be of like letting her know I love her, but also showing I love. You know what I mean? And you're still here, so like it's something's working, but like it's it's a constant sort of like uh, uh, it's, it's almost like you're, when you're in a relate, it, it's, it's when you're at work and like every three weeks you've got a meeting with your boss to, sh- to show what you've been working on. I have to constantly like let Tasha know like, Hey, all these good things are happening. Like I've done comedy, sta- stand up and acting and improv sketch and all that for 10 years. Like I'm working towards my expertise in this. I'm not some shl- like, but she has to go, well, like fucking prove it. And I got to go, all right, I need to, you know, she pushes me out of my comfort zone where mm-hmm. I might be okay getting laughs at an open mic for the next six years. I know that's not going to get me to the next level where like, you know, like we do shows together where like you've been on shows where the audience is really vibing with you. Now imagine if your audience, Joe Rogan, Bill Burr, obviously these guys are experts, right? They've done it 20, 30 plus years, but their audiences know what to expect from them. So they don't just get to perform stand up; They get to perform in front of an audience that really wants them to succeed. Like mm-hmm. that's what we, that's what we're after. Mm-hmm. Like Nickelback, fu- <laughs> everyone wants to make fun of them, but they can go out there and perform in front of their Nickelback fans and buy their Nickelback mansions and fuck their Nickelback babes and do all their shit. Dane Cook, you yeah, know they what I mean? Won. Like, yeah, they've all got their... They win. So, so it's all about staying true to ourselves. You stay true to your podcast, your stand-up, your art, and then the, and then the, the sort of commodity is there. Ver, you know what I mean? And then, like, who wouldn't want that version of you? So it's all about, like, knowing you're investing in something that's, like, really pushing towards their, their own sort of expertise. Did I, did I bore you to death, Tasha, with that? But, but do you understand what my point Tasha is? Tasha wants like, you to read me the second question. <laughs> I'm out of questions. I thought I. You only asked one. Well, the first one was a pro. Uh, we did approach. Okay, okay. This is it. Kiss. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know when you meet somebody that that they're uh, that they're ready for the kiss? Because you, in the end, you're gonna go in for it, and you don't want them to double chin it, matrix. You know, push away like Tasha did when I first tried to kiss her. Well, you know that's kind of been a scary thing lately, hasn't it? Have you been rejected, kiss wise? You can't. You cannot ask a girl if you should kiss her. You cannot. Well, I mean, we're feeling a lot of pressure these days to do so. Nothing will dry up a vagina like you saying, may I kiss you, ma'am. <laughs> I know, but you know. Nothing, I don't believe that's nothing true. That's such bullshit. Leave a comment rem- in the comment section. Nothing removes a boner as much as a, the threat of maybe a lawsuit. <laughs> but listen, what's wrong? We're not talking the workplace. What's wrong with going in for a kiss and getting rejected? There's obviously like you need to the consent is not asking wrong for the kiss unless you're Aziz Ansari apparently. <laughs> but I think people uh, came. That to was more about him just being a creep. No, people came to his defense. That's the thing. You don't lean in for a kiss if you're not getting signals that it's okay to lean in for a kiss. Well, here's the problem. Um, people have different reality tunnels, and they don't take the same signals. It's like the meaning. Like we just gave an example of how love to you is one thing, but love to you may not be another thing. So the signals that someone likes you to one person are not the same signals to another person. There's a lot of confusion going on here. So, um, you know, we can easily say, well, you're a creep. You didn't you get the signals? Yeah. I mean, on a lot of our definitions, that person's a, a creep. But maybe at the base, we don't know what their history is, but maybe not all of these people are complete creeps. A lot of it is some misunderstanding, some miscommunication, someone who has a completely different reality tunnel than you do. Someone who sees affection a different way. Someone who takes in signals different ways. I mean, you must see this all the, all the time as a, as a pretty woman, the way that uh, yeah, some men Yeah, but I think in general, up. like, we, we're living in the same society that has had the same sort of, like, unwritten rules for a long time. And if somebody doesn't know those rules, it's because they're willfully ignoring them. Like, I can understand what you're trying to say about, like, yeah. b- receiving signals differently. But, like, n- people know when they're getting the brush off. People know when but they're... People when don't, that's my point is people. Uh, some people don't know when they're getting the brush off. Haven't you had these experiences? But most people do. Yeah, I absolutely like, have. I can't understand. Oh, so, so and it's But where these stories are coming from or that small percentage, you know, we're talking about it like it's the norm. It's really not the norm, but there's a small percentage that aren't getting it. Maybe Aziz is one of these people that doesn't get the signals. 
but the story blows up and now we kind of talk about it like it's the norm like it's like well people don't people aren't getting it therefore women have to get together and deliver, but yeah, that's deliver a stronger message when what's really happening is maybe a tiny percentage of them aren't getting it um but and then i would say of that tiny percentage that aren't getting it a large percentage of them aren't psychopaths they're just socially awkward individuals that have a different up you know upbringing than us very very sheltered environment perhaps but you do your and best to learn like when you move to a new country you do the best to learn the language because sure. that's going to get you around the easiest Dude, i got rejected so hard in france so hard what was his name uh estevon oh. no, i got i and then and then a girl kissed me once and and everyone all my buddies were like oh boy fuck you're dating her now and you go what they go yeah yeah if a, it, 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 this is just in college, but they're like, if a girl kisses you, you guys are together. That was like the social code, mm. at least where I studied. So then you can even see across how uh, cross cultural uh, mores are even much different. Where like, you know, something like that. If the if the girl accepts your kiss, maybe you're now in a in a serious relationship or this kind of thing. This it's a very gray area. It's really weird. Uh, I don't know what to think of it, but I I have to say I I don't. Go in for that kiss as uh, often as I used to. But this is the big this is the big it's problem is that a lot of times men will be like, I'm not I don't even know when to talk to a woman anymore. I know that's not what you're but saying. But that's the problem, and that's what really irritates me is like if we know that it's a small percentage of people who aren't doing a good job, then like why are we making this whole men's movement out of it? Like that completely minimizes where like the actual problem. Well, I think in most cases, I agree. It I think does. It, I think we, in most we do that with a lot of problems, though. We yeah, do it. yeah. No, you're right. Where like a small percentage becomes like the news. I think because in most those cases, are the stories that get amplified by the media, so it creates this illusion that this is a much more common than it really is. Because those are the those are the anecdotes that are getting totally amplified. Because because here's this isn't a story. because it's outrageous. That's this, why. Because here's not a story. Uh, Dave meets Tasha at a bar, goes in for the first kiss. And it was wonderful. That's not a story. <laughs> What's the story is Dave. It is in my book. Dave goes in for the <laughs> first kiss and Tasha whips up some nunchucks and was like, too soon, bitch. <laughs> and fucks him up. And then Dave. I'd like to see that cartoon if anyone's like, out there wants to make that cartoon. Or, you know, a celebrity goes out and inappropriately uh, tries to kiss um, you know, uh, um, someone that just acted in a feature film with him or her uh, that kind of thing that that's the shit that gets amplified and so we all think oh my god we got to look out this is what's happening everybody's being creepy you know but maybe that's not what's really happening look yeah i think i think the first kiss in a relationship or whatever is should involve alcohol i agree well of course guinness preferably but i think uh or shouts to jameson i think uh it's part of the escalation of touching hand in the lower back maybe Grab an ass. It's one. Th it's it's a it's it's jazz, bro. It's fucking jazz. Wow, it's jazz. I ask a question, like you respond. That. Da 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 da. Team. Skip it, big pop, dumb. I ask up in here. You respond back at here. Yeah, I'm gonna amazing. jack off for of you. You're gonna come on my tits. It goes back and forth. It's one. It's I'm gonna call it. I mean, that's jazz, right, bro? We're, let's get me. Let's let's fucking get it, my cat. It's it's uh, call and answer. I Tasha hates this. Skip it, dip it, I have to say, this is brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant, baby. I love what you do. It's, are you saying that in a smug way? Oh, no, it's I jazz, just love it. bro. And it's sometimes jazz. you get the uh, this wrong is answer. A, this is a funny, funny analogy. Tasha here. and I had a uh, weird yeah. jazz up front, and it, you had and, some success. You well, probably had some had, great jazz well, up front. Well, I had, look at you. I had a five kiss. years later. You look at you. Well, I had a kiss that kind of landed, and the next one didn't. And then it was like, well, is she not into me? Or you know, well, we were friends to begin with, so is that getting in the way? And then all of a sudden, you know, I draw the line in the sand, and then she shows up, and she goes, all right, if that's where the line is, let's cross it. And then one day, and then we, you know, do 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 ba do, ski beep beep ba ba doom. And then we scat, and then um, mm, a lot of scatting, a lot of scatting, <laughs> a lot of j j in the jazz term, uh, a lot of scatting. And then and then it's like, okay, well, <laughs> but that was a communication yeah. where it was like a respectful, like not yet, bitch. And then one day it was like, okay, yeah. here we go. And it w and in and in it, I mean, any every guy's got a story where like you know. You don't just you don't just end up fingering a girl in a bar because she wasn't into it. Like sometimes, uh, you know, a woman wants to be thrown against a wall in a passionate way, respectfully. Um, 
uh, in, 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 in the quality and um, and you know tussle around. But you need to know that that's like the thing that's next. And it, and it, it doesn't go from like nice to meet you to throw someone against a wall. It goes to like we're playing this carnal sort of is carnal a word? Can I say something completely Please. risky? Yes. Let's imagine you're probably gonna hate me when I say this. <laughs> We're going through this uh, cultural phase where the empowerment of women is is uh, which I support. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> look at they shouldn't be they shouldn't be looked down upon. They shouldn't be paid this and that. I mean, this is all these are human rights. It has nothing of to do course. with it. Doesn't even have to do with a gender. It has to do with decent human beings being treated Dignity. decently. Exactly. This women empowerment is going to, uh, it, it looks like to me it's going down the road where um, m- s- uh, uh, the the sexual interactions, this stuff that we're talking about. When are you going for the first kiss? What about asking a girl out? The fear creeps in. Now we have one gender not doing these things, like asking them out, going in for the first kiss, or grabbing them aggressively and kissing them against a the bathroom wall. So this is happening. <laughs> well, you're gonna get your, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get what you wish for. Your gender is gonna get it. Some soy boy bitch. You're gonna get a movement and a change in the culture where men will behave a certain way, and there will no be. No woman is asking a man to be less of a man. N- we're talking like the difference between toxic masculinity and masculinity is huge. Like there are plenty of yeah, manly I w- I qualities even, I'm, I'm that not women talking love about that are not trying to sure, dismiss. But toxic masculinity is not what I'm referring to. Going in, being afraid to go into the in for the going in for the first kiss without being sure. That's not toxic ma- masculinity. No. Well, I, this has all spurred from the women's movement. Which is like a sort of like nasty, icky reaction to like women having dignity. I think men, I think men for the most part find it sexy. I I wasn't laying it out like that at all. I wasn't laying it out like that at all. And where I was going with it was there's going to be a time where because as biological creatures, we have in our bones very deeply, deep in our bones, (laughs) things that we feel that feel good to us and a man being really powerful and a man ah, that's something (laughs) deep that's something i'm gonna tell you this sounds crazy (laughs) but in your reptilian brain you want that Ah, and and it's gonna go and it's gonna be a, a quality that kind of goes away and i think women are gonna feel that and there's gonna be another i think it's gonna be like a cycle I think because these things can be like it swings back a pendulum swing. Yeah. Not to go back to you don't get right. So, I mean, I'm not talking about that. That is horrendous. I'm talking, we're talking about the, the dance of seduction, the dance of seduction based on when do you go with in for the first kiss, which is what prompted all of this. <laughs> uh, I think in deep in our bones, uh, one of us wants to be the aggressor and one of us wants to be the recipient of some sexual aggression. Some, and it can go back and forth. And it can th- flip on itself. I think we're heading to a place where some of this is going to disappear from, you know, some, uh, not the entire, you know, gender, but like, I think a lot of us are going to get checked and this may come away. And then I think women are going to long for a time where a man would just fucking grab you and, and take you. The good old days. All right. So let me share this with you. I was reading it. Uh, earlier and it's still up on my phone. Twenty eight reasons it pays to have a feminist marriage. Ooh, I like this. And, and so I've this never even heard of a feminist marriage. Tasha, can a, I can I preface before you a, say this? This is a I, term I've never heard of. I, 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 I don't. Um, I don't. I don't know how to word this, but I value Tasha's femininity at a level I probably wouldn't even have known before we we knew each other. So I, I respect. Yeah, I respect you, and I want you to know that none of what we're talking about is anything to, like, make women less than. I think it's just about giving guys the confidence to, like, really know when it's right to, like, you know, just, just feel feel your own, like, Yeah, identity. but I think it's, like, pretty simple. It's just about being, like, um, like 
attentive to other people's needs. You do it with other men all day long and, uh, and when you're the, playing like the power play games in the office or wherever, like y- you know how to read those signals. So like, you know how to read a woman's signals too. hundred percent. And and that's, and, and before we get into it, you're right. Men, men, it's our job to it's your le- responsibility. It's our, it's our responsibility to know, not to say, Oh, I don't even know if I can say hi to a woman anymore. It, this isn't a problem in my life. I don't have a problem with 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 the the way I talk to women or whatever it the problem the problem is is that men need to learn not to use this to be afraid so like you're Jonesy what you're saying is like it's a very rational like fear to have but you need to like acknowledge it and say no 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 I'm not the creep I'm gonna I'm gonna you know listen like, to trust women my own instincts trust my own instincts know that like when this girl is feeling it know when she's not feeling it and being cool with that yeah it's the fucking pot it's the it's the you're just the it's the you're gonna touch the pot to make sure you don't burn your hand and you get okay we're good you know what I mean like there's a simple respect there but anyway I don't want to interrupt you Tasha so go for it well you know it's just an article so we'll we'll run through these reasons as quickly <laughs> as possible this is what are, what are these 28 reasons it pays to have a feminist marriage what's a feminist marriage um well why don't we wait so and see I've, I've heard of there's I've parity heard of in your relationship you push each other to reach your goals and full potential because ultimately you know you're stronger as a team Equality. Oh, it's not one sided it's not only me supporting Dave's goals it's Dave supporting my goals too because yeah. we're better together uh, you're not wedded to outdated gender expectations want to be a stay at home dad while your wife brings home the bacon go for it I do, the, I do the laundry I agree Continue. And the dishes. <laughs> She's saying that <laughs> you will. Uh, there's no place for locker room talk or boys will be boys. Excuses in your relationships. You hold each other to a higher standard. I love locker room talk with you. When it's time to clean the house or do the laundry, you divide up the chores according to preference. Totally. And workload. That, this is not like, gender. We're, we're so far evolved past this. Of course. You and I. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would hope so. I love. I got a Dyson cordless vacuum. I love vacuuming. A 2015 (laughs) study from the University of Alberta suggested that people in more egalitarian relationships have Mm. higher relationship satisfaction and more sex than couples who leave it to one spouse. Please. Okay, keep going. I don't really understand. Um, What do you mean you don't understand that? That's pretty simple. Egalitarian? Yeah, egalitarian. If they split the workload... They're happier well, and they have more sex. Well, because if if the women's stuck cleaning everything, she's, she's gonna be gonna bitter. Be fucking tired. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Another reason feminist couples have better sex: feminist men recognize that a woman's pleasure is just as important as theirs. No rolling over and falling asleep prematurely. That's why you've got can fifteen I, sex toys and I got a cock ring. I don't understand why this is called feminism. It's equality. Because that's yeah, what yeah, feminism yeah. is, is just equality. We're not out to get men. We're not waiting in the bushes like, oh, he kissed me too. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you know? It's it's Yeah, not I just I just feel like that. this is the the term is funny. The, this feminist marriage is funny to me like it just seems like it should be this is a this happy should be and productive marriage okay, feminist, ideal marriage this okay, is like okay, ideal so marriage from, from, for this article yeah. feminist means equal rights um you'd never slut shame your partner for a sexual past no um you have the just luxury of not having decently. to explain the importance of planned parenthood to your significant other mansplaining's not an issue that's 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 bullshit first of all because there's plenty of things i explain to you that you don't know about i know how an offensive line works in the football but that's not mansplaining that's explaining mansplaining is when you're explaining to to a woman who already fucking knows because you think that you know more than her it's like when a guy like on twitter is explaining to like a fucking gynecologist like what the parts of the vagina are she's like i'm a gynecologist i know this better that's a but that's and he and he's just tweeting at her that he knows more that's a correct example that that's what mansplaining is. The problem is, is people are saying man. It's like a, a I don't guy know. can't what even is mansplaining. A, it's when a, it's when you it's it's when a guy just like projects that these he knows. these terms to me are so silly. But go ahead. But 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 Tasha, that's the right example because there are plenty of times when a guy goes like, well, you don't even know what. And the girl goes, I'm a gynecologist. I know what a vagina. Is. Like a man explaining to a woman about her period would be mansplaining. Uh, okay. You know that's a very specific like obvious example. But there's plenty of times when, like, and again, you don't accuse me of mansplaining to you. We have, we, you, you no, mean, you don't mansplain J- to me, Jonesy. We but, have, a, but ha- have I been mansplained too? 
Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. People and I'm sure it's, a, I'm sure it's a, tell it's me stupid shit all the time. I know, I know way more about whatever topic than they do. Like people who like imagine <laughs> someone walks up to me and says that they know how to cure Lyme disease or whatever, that they're an expert on Lyme disease, but they just like follow the fucking medical medium on Instagram. You know, like I'm an expert here because it's my personal experience. So a guy talking about like, a vagina to a girl or like tampons there was a thing that came out recently that was about mm-hmm. it was a guy because there's the pink tax right which is that a lot of women's n- needs products are taxed versus men's needs products are not, not like, tax like, they're they're they charge more like, okay. like a razor so there's two things there's a actually, man explaining it to her <laughs> pink tax is um tax is just a bad word for it because it's it's it's, it's like well, Gillette. they're both tax but Gillette so would, no, 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 but they're two separate but things so is, it's one about cost like more? a company a company will yeah. charge more for pink razors than blue razors uh-huh, okay they'll they'll up because, that they, cost know because they know women will pay more will pay for it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is wrong but it's also like it's it's driven then, by economics and it, is, it's wrong this is a totally yeah. separate issue from just that you shouldn't have to pay tax on tampons because ta- tampons are a necessity unless you want us fucking bleeding everywhere, you know? So, like, why do we have to pay tax on that? You don't have to pay tax on, like, you know, fruits and vegetables. There's because plenty of cost you need to being a woman that should be absorbed. It's not a luxury. Not a tampon joke, but absorbed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of things like that. Yeah, there's plenty. Okay, keep, yeah, yeah. do you okay, want to... Okay, but um, so there was a guy who was, like, trying to, like, be smart about, uh-huh. you know, because women had complained that, like, it's expensive to be a woman and there shouldn't be a tax on feminine products because they are not a luxury, they're a need. And he said, well, blah, 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 according to this, you should, uh, you only bleed this many ounces in a year so you can have a year supply of tampons in two boxes and people mm. are like that's not how it fucking works you change your tamp you know like why are you trying to explain this mm. to me you don't know how it works it just sounds like an asshole this guy yeah what yeah. i just want what i want for but women the, the mansplaining thing like the guy who told you all about lyme disease though is it just because like he's probably spewing that out to everybody it don't it don't matter if anyone comes up to him and says i know about lyme disease people just do that well, yeah, just men, like, men will explain to everyone each other. some if you're a fucking know-it-all you're a know-it-all to everybody you're yeah, like exactly. no let me tell you what's up i mean yeah my, you, you're right there there you know are some mean? people that are just like my, that. my yeah, college yeah. roommate abe would tell so you is that, ev- like, he, how, he knew everything. Does, so i'm just because uh, i never i don't know about i think as a guy you just have to like take it on the chin and go okay you might call it mansplaining but yeah that guy might mansplain to everybody and just realize maybe just don't explain well, to anybody but, things. And, but you got to also think that maybe this is a phenomenon that happens more in men i mean uh, uh, in general and i'm not speaking that for this like for all people out there sure i've had like gabby friends but yeah. like girls don't come up to me and try and tell me that yeah, they yeah. know everything. So are you Guys saying, are you say, you're saying more men are on power trips than women? Yeah, of course. I do it with comedy. And, and like just less conscientious of yeah. like what but a normal uh, just, conversation but is just supposed to FYI, be But just FYI, they're doing it to the rest of us too. Like they're doing it to like a soft-spoken dude like me. Like they're doing it to me. Like these people that I are, these people, are these people on power trips, man, yeah. they're like, this is yeah, what the, this is how I, they interact with everybody. I meet an open micer all they the really time do. that tries to tell me the secrets of comedy. Oh my God, I just, can't even you tell you. You're like, yeah, but I understand. Okay, I understand the dynamic. Maybe Lyme disease was a bad example, but like I like football. I watch football, but how many times have I been in a bar when somebody comes up and like tries to like test my knowledge about like what a true football fan Name I am or something play- yeah, I you it, know yeah. like just like I don't need you to explain this play to me because I'm watching the game with my own two eyes just the same way you're mm-hmm. watching the game with your own two eyes so it's it's sort of like I like, see men trying to insert themselves like even if they're just trying to make conversation like yeah, don't yeah. try and make conversation by inserting yeah. yourself into like my shit plus it's sexier to like listen but just at the end of the day just so you know they you know their intentions are are genuine like they just really want to put their penis in you <laughs> <laughs> that's, it comes from it's love very simple it comes from love <laughs> 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 you have more you have yeah, more yeah, listen. yeah yeah hold on let's see if there's anything I else t- good i don't want to see i'm listening i'm not know. even going to call this the feminist marriage i refuse to i'm going to call this the ideal marriage what, what do you yeah, have on the ideal marriage list marriage. i wish we could get back to a place where feminism is about equality but like i can't tell you how many people today posted like oh geez the f- fuck the patriarchy they wanted to shit on our international women's day it's like yeah i'll i'll joke about it like everyone else but like like, I was also the first person, Tasha, to post on my newsletter. Uh, my first part of my newsletter yesterday was promoting Tasha. Congratulations to my 
my partner, my co-host for, what for did being you do? just for being a fucking yeah. badass woman who brings so much of her of the of the f- of femininity. I'm not on your news that, list. Get on it. Uh, I didn't know right, you had a newsletter. Right go to a month. go to sex actually. Wait, what's it on sexactuallypodcast dot com? You can sign up for it, <laughs> or I'll I'll put you on with or without your consent. <laughs> but anyway, my point is is that yeah. like like. Yeah. We're, the, the, no one's no one, the, the patriarchy is not something to be like destroyed. Like I think we're the, we we're, we're actively opening the door for women. Sure, there's gonna be eight percent that are fucking assholes, but they're weak like bitches. You what know, are you about? There, there's gonna be there's always gonna be a percentage of people that are, aren't with the times. There's gonna be a percentage of men that are like, why can't women just know their place? You know, hundred percent. Do you but, know how stupid people are? Okay, so in Utah, they just voted to uh, allow sex outside of marriage. It passed in the Senate. It passed 51 to 34. <laughs> you mean like a, so a single person can have sex legally? So, yeah. So in Utah, they, this is one, this is very, you know. Mormon. Yeah, I mean, they they have, their assholes are like this. You know what I mean? They're just tight asses and everything is, all kinds of this behavior is like, they have issues with it. So they voted to, you know, get rid of the, uh, what's, what's it called? Um, well, the sex out of marriage, whatever that word. Uh, Wedlock? Uh, there's a word for it. Um, uh, Monogamy? No, no. It's so f- it was illegal to cheat, not just it's like a single person. It's on the books sex. to not. You can't have sex out of wedlock. It's against. It's against the law. That okay. was. It's still on the books, and so they 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 they're like, well, let's get this some of these older laws off the books. It's kind of ridiculous. People are doing this. There's other states though where it's illegal to cheat, like where you can like financially like sue somebody yeah, for yeah, cheating. Yeah, like, I mean there are the plenty Carolinas. of old like weird things but that the, are my, technically considered a crime that uh, are just like outdated yeah, laws on that aren't books. really enforced. Sure, sure. I'm sure there's Utah law. But there law. is potential that somebody could nefariously go after somebody. It's on the know. books. Yeah. But my point is 51 to 34. <laughs> that means 34 motherfuckers were like, Nope, it still should be illegal. Too soon. <laughs> this is our culture, man. Yeah. So now I like look at we all should be treated better. We all should be forward thinking. We all should be moving to make it a better world for everybody. But as long as there's like imagine 34 motherfuckers probably old crusty people living yeah, in who, living in who the don't past. have any desire to put themselves in anybody else's shoes they think they everybody even. should live their way it's their way they're or the highway nobody else should have any freedom and, of choice and they're way past the age where they can even imagine yeah what it's like they're just fucking crusty old fucks that need to like really walk into the ocean with a pocket full of cinder blocks <laughs> in my opinion is that too Sounds harsh like a but yeah Heavy metal song. But pocket full of cinder blocks. <laughs> it sounds like a rage against the machine. Yes, yeah. so <laughs> pocket full of cinder blocks. <laughs> Walk into the ocean with the pocket full of cinder blocks. Bulls on parade. <laughs> the pocket full of cinder blocks. Bulls on parade. With the pocket full of cinder blocks. Bulls on parade. Pocket full of cinder blocks. <laughs> Sorry. I think I blow out your mic. No, it's really good. This news uh, uh, seems so weird AF. Like, look at man. Like, look at. And, and I'm, I'm just saying. There's a lot of these people are just out there still, and it's it's holding us all back. And and uh, most of us aren't like this, you know. And so like we just gotta stick to the mean and be like, all right, these old fucks are gonna die someday. We hope pretty soon. You know they say you know? sunshine, yeah. and then and we can start to see like everybody's gonna everybody's gonna benefit from this. Not just women, all of us. People that wanna have sex out of wedlock and youth. In Utah, there's other shit going but on in Utah. But that's about like continuing it's to like be boom, conscientious boom, boom. and like. Yeah. It, but here's the thing: it seems like, and we were talking about this earlier, more and more these outliers are becoming the whole conversation. So these outliers, uh, outliers have started like bitching about feminism or whatever, and it's become this whole conversation. And you know, like what happened w- with your family with the late term abortion stuff. Like it's <laughs> like these sort of like fringe things that yeah, that social are media the gives whole, them a voice that that's become like the big issue. Yeah. And so this like whole like men's movement bullshit stuff. So really. what is this? This men's movement? What's that? The problem is that social media gives a small voice a bigger sort of uh, megaphone than they really have. And we need to be aware of that, like, yeah. all right, listen, the men, the men's rights activate. That's not a thing. That's something that, the like, look. Uh, so yeah, but, but 
in all fairness, when you sat down, and you said you did exactly that thing that was like, well, you can't kiss a girl anymore. Like, yeah. that's not a thing. I didn't quite say that. But, but it's OK I, for a guy you know, to but, uh, along those lines. I said I'm, I'm a little more hesitant than go in for the first kiss than Which I ordinarily was. Which is good because was. at least that might stop the guy when it's not right. You know what I mean? Like, it's and a I'm a pretty, c- I'm pretty confident in that area, I'm but sure it's made me think. I'm sure I'm just being honest. Yeah, but it's like, we, of course you want to be honest. Of course you want to like always be challenging yourself to be a better person and to be more self aware and whatever. But like, I don't like when it's turned into a trope. You know, it's like the same old joke that I keep hearing over and over. Like, well, he can't do that, and Mike Pence can't go out to dinner with a woman and won't hire mm-hmm. a woman and all this stuff it's like that's not the solution by like, narrowing the goalpost you're gonna get a few misses and then mike pence is a miss like he shouldn't have a problem going out to dinner with a, a, a co-worker like you know what i mean like you're gonna you're gonna you're, you're we're narrowing uh the level of expectation which is fine but like those things that are on the border are no longer field goals that's the field goal post is slightly narrower and what that means is like it doesn't mean it harder for what it is you're supposed to do it's like well don't think that you should pinch someone's ass that you work with like don't think that that was the next step in like escalating your sexual like just you know the rule book is becoming a little bit more defined not in a way that's restrictive just in a way that's like but that's good like it's good to know the rules yeah it's good there's no shortage of women that don't want to go to a bar meet a guy and, and get and throw it down with him there's no shortage of that it's just a matter of you know just you know being more conscientious of how you read the situation did you want to barrel through the rest of sure. those let's see because we just hit we two hours, so we're gonna wow. get. We're gonna you start. guys, you guys check off the boxes on a lot of these, by the way. So you should be pretty proud of that. Yeah, we, this is, dude. I mean, yeah, I. I mean, it seems like it, anyway. I have a me. feminist vagina. This, this kind of ideologically, this is your you partner believes the world is a better place when women are empowered. When women are empowered, they immeasurably improve the lives of everyone around them, their families, communities, their countries. This I want start, now this part of the list is starting to be more like a feminist marriage. Philosophical. Well, I want those, Tasha. Those I want her to be to be empowered to pursue the world she wants, so she doesn't feel bitter when I pursue mine. You know what I mean? I have to pursue mm. my thing. And some of us is a Venn diagram. Some of what we pursue is together, podcast, Patreon. She but should pursue hers more than absolutely. you because she makes more money. Exactly. <laughs> Cut a check. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Your partner <laughs> loves your body, recognizes that the, the decisions you make regarding it are yours and yours alone. Sexual and reproductive rights matter to both of you. I don't want you getting the level of plastic surgery where... Whoa, you, whoa. What's going on with this? Do you know this? what I mean? So when it comes to respecting your body, I will... Are you getting I, plastic surgery? No, no, no oh, I'm, okay. I'm just... What I'm saying saying is I want to draw the line where like LA is a fucking weird place and I will not let you turn what's beautiful into a freak show. She doesn't sexual sound like someone who's easily taken in by we're LA talking culture. About, Dave. We're talking about it sexual and bu- reproductive rights. Okay, well, th- that'll probably be one if you keep scrolling. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't fret about maintaining friendships with friends of the opposite sex. You know, your partner knows you can and should have relationships with you other men with and other women. You struggle with that? Trust. No, I don't struggle with that. Okay. Just asking. I, I, I mean, I obviously want to know everything. I don't want to be like, who's fucking Charles? If I your partner's guy friends Charles? start <laughs> bad-mouthing feminism, you know he'll correct them. Well, that's, I mean, look, uh, jokes, your complaints jokes are jokes. Are, your complaints and concerns are never de- delegitimized because of your sex. Okay, good. Keep going. Your partner would never say, sounds like someone's on their period. Well, <laughs> if you are, that's totally fine. You don't look like at healthy, each other. A healthy relationship, they can laugh at that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, right? But like your period really is, a, yeah. a, I mean, like yeah. sometimes w- p- people get hormonal. It's just like if I have like, oh, Dave, you're being a little crazy. You must have a big show coming up. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. I get a little high strung. We have a show coming up. Yeah. March 17th. I think it's very healthy to talk about uh, the sort of uh, mood swings that are involved in a period. Yeah. Myself. Of course. And work around that. Did you hit your tooth? I just hit my tooth with a mic. That <laughs> sound was me hitting my I tooth. I do that all the time. <laughs> the mic. I think she had the booty uh, doll. You don't look at each other as a project or someone to fix. Men don't need to be anyone's knight in shining armor. Women shouldn't feel like they can love away a man's problem. Look, I don't think I want to fix you, but renovation is definitely <laughs> in the books. All You're keep fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to take your name. I don't want you Whoa, to. Whoa, what about that? I don't care. Neo, it's pretty sexy. Yeah, I don't care. It's I a already w- have a name. <laughs> what's, your last, what's your last name, by the way? Courtney. Yeah, that you took from a guy. Wait a minute. The Did patriarchy. You? Oh, you took <laughs> it from you should a guy. Take, you should take your mom's name. 
How about that? If we have kids, we can discuss what yeah. name we want. I say you change last your last name. I, I like her last name better than yours. Thank you. Yeah. Just saying. Dave Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> You can Dave, take mine. I should have Boone should be my middle name. Dave Boone the Bassett Courtney. <laughs> no balls. <laughs> <laughs> your partner is proud, not resentful of your career accomplishments. Sometimes I wonder, though, if my six, if and when I reach my success, if you'll be proud if I've got to you know, travel the country or if you'll be very resentful of my traveling the country. Well, as if long you as I'm traveling, too. See, but what go. if you have kids? I mean, how, do you, how do you work that in there? Shared responsibilities. Traveling with Weekends, the kids, weekdays. You think it's safe? You think it's healthy to d- drag these kids to you know, to Canton, d- Ohio, Demoyne. so he can work at strip mall. <laughs> 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 I don't know. We're gonna get an airstream. They're coming to Canton. Yeah. Let's go. All right, <laughs> keep going. Uh, phrases like "man up" or "don't be a pussy" are off limits. Mm, that's gone. hard. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. It's kind of a pussy. No, but you got to think about that when you're raising kids. That's all part of toxic masculinity. Like trying to undermine like a boy's feelings or tell him that he can't express his feelings or like don't be a pussy is obviously very derogative for girls. It makes little girls feel like they're less than. It's kind of a bitch example, but keep going. That, <laughs> did it. that doesn't work. That was pretty funny. Uh, it feels good to be with someone who appreciates your brain just as much as your beauty. Of course. Keep going. This is no brainer. Come on. If you have kids, you can talk about consent and the birds as the bees as a team. <laughs> okay, that's yeah, I don't understand why parents don't do that from the get-go. Cross the bridge. It's like, oh, there. the guy talks to the guy. And it's, well, it's the like guy's like got a dick. The dick penetrates the vagina. Mm. Like, obviously you be both discussed. recognize that pay, paid parental leave is good for everyone. Yeah. I would I'd be fucking love it to be paid to like watch my kid. Yeah, of course. I feel horrible for these guys that got to go out there and work their construction jobs and not get to like watch their kids' first steps. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> our, uh, our country's so far behind in that. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just do, do, do. Hey, your partner understands why you felt compelled to go to the women's march. Hell, they probably joined you and wore a "This is what a feminist looks like" T-shirt. I drove you to the airport. That's close enough. I drove you to the airport, did I not? And I'm sure you've driven him to a Patriots game, so it's all it all it's all even there. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. <laughs> Patriots and I'm feminism. Just fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> An equal relationship. Yeah. This is like no brainer. What guy? What guy's stopping their yeah, wife from going to the, the f- women's march? Does, no, do people, but people are. The people are people? Are, are like people? I hate to say fake news. Weird AF for sure. <laughs> I don't see this. Okay, maybe, but like, let's just. Well, let the but you don't think, I mean, like one of those things was like, you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. My mom's mom told her that like she had to go to yeah. college, but she had to be a teacher. Yeah. Like the only jobs for mm. women at the time were nurse or teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like this I kind of stuff is like sure. only starting to shift in the national consciousness that no, like I, I can be whatever I want. I can be sexually liberated. I don't have to take my husband's last name. Like these are all controversial topics. I think topics. younger. Like I don't think it is for people our age. Body. I don't it's think young people are like debating about this flyover shit. Flyover state. Like this, perhaps, perhaps flyover state. Here, can I just are. say something? That's why I brought up the issue earlier. There was thirty-four people who still are living in the past. So this yeah. is why this article has to come up for these 34 people but i'm sorry to say these 34 people aren't going to read this and their life's going to be changed you know like yeah. this is uh, yeah we're not here to convince my parents yeah. why they shouldn't vote for this Trump. Like, like all this stuff to me was like oh yeah of course matter of fact and to him of course matter of fact listen Maybe, uh, is it because we're a certain age or is it because we grew up on the coast like what is it or because you've like done some enlightenment maybe but I, d- listen, I don't know uh, sunlight it, it, it blows me away that like to think that other people my age read that and go Fuck no, you know what I mean? Like, and I probably did the right accent to the, someone who would. But both of you that. guys b- laughed about like locker room talk or like f- phrases that are harmful. Well, because well, the, the, the way they the way they phrased it was kind of like. Funny I could get into the whole yeah, locker room yeah. talk thing. There's plenty of like horrible conversations men have, and also that comedians have. That's totally like uh, uh, right for its context. Like, there's plenty of times when like, look, if I was to say you know the n word or like you know, or C word or whatever in a certain context around certain people, it's fine. I'm sorry to say that it's fine. It, it, it's, it doesn't mean you don't respect something. And so I think reading this list, it's, they're no brainers, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to make fun of certain things being the irreverent person who, who like, who like uh, questions. But I also think that like when you're talking about comedy, that's not really real life. 
that's different. That's a different type of person. And that's a that's a whole different context because these are people that are like masters at turning something that's irreverent into funny. Like you're turning like that's a masters of like uh, pointing the finger at society, turning something on its head and and making and calling it out and making it funny. We're talking about just mm-hmm. like regular life. Sure. But there's people. plenty there's plenty of times mm-hmm. when like a, a guy works works constr- and I've worked construction. I've done all these jobs where a guys like, oh, yeah, you know, my old lady back home, you know, she's, you know, whatever. And he's and it's like there's a way to relate to people that might not play well on a Facebook status. But but co- communications all about sort of like I'll I'll dumb down my speech talking to somebody or I'll swear more when I'm around a painter. You know what I mean? Versus like try to like. So you call a, you call a painter a pussy. Yeah, this fucking cunt over here with he his won't two get up. strokes and his, you know what I mean. But like we we adapt so quickly. I mean, if I'm talking to one of like Puker, right, my buddy from Belgium, I'll speak slower. I really will. Like you can tell when I when I studied abroad in France, my, my I just started speaking slower because they couldn't understand me and like in my traditional like colloquialism. And it's it's important to 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 quit judging people based on you said this word versus you said this word and, and go back to context. And that's the problem with social media. It's a problem with the internet is that you don't pick up context. Not one person, not one person in the last five years has emailed me and told me I'm a racist or I'm a homophobe or I'm a sexist. But I do think it's important to like realize that like, sure, you're talking about these specific instances where like you're within a trusted group of people. I There's it like for me for example um i used to work with this one girl who like always would say the Where did you word work? J- just like a, a, in a fashion thing you could say retarded yeah. if that's what but you're talking about but i don't like that word but you're, but you're like but this is the problem is you're you're talking about it in a in a factual like historical way you can it's okay if you if you say she used to say retarded. You're not using it in a vindictive way. She, oh, the girl saying, used to say retarded. You're not saying she was yeah. a retard. We're just we're just blurring speech by by. But, but in general, like people, you know, mm-hmm. that's not something that you that that's something that you have to be careful about in the workplace. Like you you be sure. careful not to swear in the workplace. But I don't. I tell comics don't say it on stage too. If I see a comic saying it on stage or a friend of mine, I'm like, don't say that on stage. I know what you mean, and I actually watched a, a Kane, who's going to be on the show, March 17th. I watched him say retarded, and someone afterwards like shoot him out for it. I say it in a joke that's like clearly making fun of it uh, in a way. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I say Tom in a way Segura like, did it in his last special exactly. in, a, in a way where he was talking about how you can't say this word anymore, this and that. And, and it's still the... Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's, you know... It, Pretty good joke. He's a smart guy. You know, you got to kind of let it fly. With and that. It's but still you can't made, really say this but they, word. They, I don't tell they, people they to say this word. They try to petition to get him choose off Choose a of, different word. You can choose a different word. They petitioned to get him off of Netflix for it. It made him more famous. So but like, They but petitioned like, him to get on Netflix yeah, for saying that? Yeah, it made him that? super famous. Like, it made him like... It for saying the, that? For that joke? Yeah. He says the N-word. No, but that was the one, and that was the thing. Right. And it used to be like you know, well, like you said the N words you know, on uh, three specials. Well, 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 we, this is all this uh, this all began when it was Black Eyed Peas. Let's get retarded in a hero. Oh, they did say that. didn't Remember they? that? And then like all yeah. of a sudden one day it was Let's get it started in here. And then like, but in ju- the whole point is that like it doesn't require a ton of effort to be conscientious about like the way that you speak and the impact that your words might have on the people around you. So. Yes, we all make mistakes. I have said things that then I'm like, oh, man, that was just wrong. Like I should, you know, like Agreed. put my foot in my mouth and I feel icky when I get home. Um, But like we all make mistakes. So people are generally forgiving. But I think it, in general, you want to make sure that like especially around your kids or whatever, like I get annoyed when you make jokes about women, their bodies, whatever, like or I'll say fag things come up, just you like know, stuff like that. St- some of that stuff. You know, I tell you, don't say that. I try I very like hard not. To, I, honestly, fat shaming for me, I try very hard. You know, I've got, I've got, you know, parents that are overweight, and it, it really does like. No, I'll, I won't make. I one, years ago, I made a joke about Adele being fat, and I, uh, I paid the price for it, and I, and I really, and I really used that shame to think about it. And I understood the, the gravity of that. And whoa. Yeah. No, no, no. Like there's, no, there's no. good. So it's, a but there's overcorrecting of this. Like there's good, like that was a good example I, for me to I, learn. I just want to play devil's advocate for a second with what you just said. And, um, you said it's, there's no excuse for someone to change their language. It's easy to change your language. Well, it's not easy to change your language. If for three decades you grew up in South Boston, with yeah. no black people. And a stranger's not no, going to do I'm, it. I'm, I'm, and I'm you not use saying a certain that it's language. easy at all. I'm not it's saying not. that. I'm saying it's, a, it's not a ton of extra effort to but start it, to be 
to start to consider. And like, yes, it's a habit and it requires practice. And I, you know, I cuss. I have a hard time not cussing in front of kids so because I have, I'm out of you practice, you, never, yeah, okay. you know, but, uh, but if we had kids running around, I would be more conscientious about it. If I'm about women, if I'm around but women, I'm going to make be more conscientious right. not to say things sure. that are. Tasha's really good. But you're about te- you're intelligent and you're considerate and conscientious. Like imagine someone who grows up in Florida. You know, they're really dumb. Listen, and Tasha. They, Tasha does a great they, job. Not only do they have the language situation not under control, but they don't even have the brain, the hind brain, to like check it. They don't have like they don't. They're not. They're not. They're we're not. We're dealing with people. I mean, yeah, they're not. That I love to think of an ideal situation when no one ever like says retarded, that, but like it's not going to happen for a even while. Even dumb dogs like can learn some things. So that's like my. Yeah. If you hope hurt them or like, starve them, it's not that we should be like pointing fingers and shaming people and whatever, but like gentle lessons like oh don't say that but that's, you know, that's like a problem when, uh, that's what's going when, on right now and that's what's flat, going on now that's like what's going on gentle lessons are going on would you yeah. say yeah absolutely. yeah yeah, yeah. I, and I think it. it's a good thing yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, there's i agree totally i agree instances of this sort of stuff being over the top yeah. and people losing their jobs yeah. and horrible shaming and you i, I can't imagine being the recipient yeah. of that i would want to hide yeah. in my house for a year straight but you know it is important that like we as a collective the collective consciousness we grow and we yeah. try and be better and we try and be more considerate of other people and put ourselves in other shoes and consider other people's backgrounds or experiences. I think I mean, one of the things that's going on here is I'm a little negative. It, it, I, I have little faith in art culture you have some faith in that like you think it this minimal is, you're like this is coming <laughs> i'm like glasses have to empty I i'm like these people are never going to get it together I and i'm just hoping that they die like <laughs> i'm hoping like please well, die that's, that's part of it yeah absolutely <laughs> i mean when you look at like so that we can just move on without you i just look at it from a place of of empathy and thinking that p- most people aren't vindictive like well yeah fuck faggots well no they're probably you know what I mean? It's not most people aren't don't have that much vitriol. It's just yeah, but, I don't know, uh, but, but, you, but a culture that's warm is. to that sort of behavior it man. empowers those. My, my problem is this, this culture is filled with this though, man. This this is bad. Like uh, I, I just want I want to tell you. So Brody Stevens just killed himself, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I was watching some of his YouTube. Clips. I can't stop watching. So Comedy They're Central so put out some things, and dude, read some of those comments. People are truly ignorant Disgusting. and evil like truly hey now i see why this guy killed himself yeah but you're looking at the internet and that's and that's problems we can't we can't the internet says very specific group of but the internet is but the literally f- shaping the, the, the small humans mm. because we're we're older than that now but little kids are growing up online they're growing up on so youtube this is a and sure and that's it's bad. becoming their reality that they see hateful stuff off all the time you remember the other night i was doing a live stream and some like 12 year old girl got on and just started like trolling me and saying like that's stupid whatever you're ugly like just just means comments and i didn't know who this person was and i just you know when people are shitty i just block them but i was like you know she called me ugly i didn't even know if it was a girl at this point but i was just like whatever fuck this person i'm blocking them and i went when i hit to block them, it shows their profile picture. Normally, I can't see. And I'm looking at, a t- like, a 10-year-old girl. And I was, like, it's just so thrown off. Like, this is this girl's idea of a good time. But it is because that's what kids are doing these days. Yeah. This is where they're growing up. Like, this, no wonder, like, suicide rates are super high. Sure. You know, in kids, you like, yeah. yes, it's online bullying. This is the, yeah. this is the world that they're living in. This they is. think that this sort of vitriol is normal. If you're going to if you're going to gently shame people like you said, like and I and I believe in that. I believe in a gentle like, "Oh, bro, Come on, don't, don't don't call someone retarded, you know, whatever. Or don't that, I, grab a girl's ass in the bar or yeah, don't, I'm, whatever. Yeah, all that, of, of course. But I, I just don't believe in, like, you know, going straight to, like, doxing people and firing them because you're just, you're, just, you're like, creating, you're making them feel like they're a victim. And and it and they're not, you know what I mean? They're they're so th- so the problem is like we shouldn't take such hard stances on like this is right, this is long. We should have teachable moments where people learn. And of course, it's not your job to teach some ten year old to have manners, but like all you can do is control your own reality and just like and just know that you're, you know what I mean? You've got like we've got to have these filters to block out. And of course, I'm the worst at it. If I get a bad review on something, I go fucking, I go what the fuck, man? Like I'm just making these YouTube videos to make you happy. Like why you gotta like shit on me? But like. 
it's it's all about knowing that yeah these 10 year olds might not have been able to type that out in the past but people have their thoughts people have this this reckless feeling man that sucks when they don't even know what they're talking about and, we, and it's like let let the kids learn let them grow up whatever but like you know what i mean just know that uh, that we're correcting in the right direction and you know what i mean people it's it's a conscientious sh- it's a it's a shift of consciousness where we're going in the right direction yet somehow the one percent of people that are making fun of brody are the ones you see and i totally get it but like i've also seen thousands of people like the amount of hits and views he's gotten on youtube because he's a one-of-a-kind guy i mean tasha knows I mean, probably like 70 percent the last two weeks, most nights when Tasha goes to bed, I'm watching a Brody clip on YouTube. I'm just yeah, laughing, watching. watching. He's saying the same jokes over and over. I'm mm. so, I get yeah. P.O. in the shower. You yeah. got it. Like, I'm just, yeah. I fucking love this guy. And I've fallen yeah. in love with him more watching him, even though, you know, since he's passed away. And, of course, he suffered uh, through some incredible, and, you know, some people don't understand suicide. They don't understand the, uh, you know, the, the idea that like you just, you're in so much pain. And I used to be like that. We'd be like, man, yeah, it really is like spineless to kill yourself. Like the, you know, the Catholic and Christian belief is that like you're committing a sin. You go to hell if you kill yourself. And uh, that's what they say. Of course. And it's like, and that's coming from a place of fear. And I think we all, for the most part, understand now, like it's just, it's just a sickness. And unfortunately they'll never, they'll never know in this world, the the amount of love that they had. And he's a good example where I talk about the love that people had for Brody Stevens, but yeah, you're right. There's going to be comments like this guy fucking sucks. And it's like not in the room. If you were in the room, you yeah, knew he was you special know, in other places. You know, you don't get this, man. You get this here in this country, you know, in other places, people don't act like this. This yeah. is sick. It's sick. Well, it, and I wanted to say this. I've tried to say it 15 times, and I appreciate uh, I appreciate both of you being on the podcast today. We're at, <laughs> we're at two. Did she have a choice? We're at, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, <laughs> I'm stuck here. We're almost at two it and a half hours. Like she was, so we have you to You dragged go. her here and made <laughs> her no, stay here, no, and I feel she bad. Knows, she knows she's racking in and the karma like, points for the kinda, massage. Like we're kind of not attacking her, but I felt like she, she was probably felt like she, you, might, you probably felt like you were in between two Especially dudes Especially as the sober one. After the first hour when I started being included, that was fun. We like to warm up to you, Tyler. For the first hour, I really wasn't included either. It was just Dave talking. This guy runs his gums like fucking nobody's business. <laughs> runs his gums i love it <laughs> what i was trying to say he did this on, on my when he was podcast with me i think at some point in my podcast i'm like is this the thing where you just talk about yourself the whole time <laughs> was i talking okay listen <laughs> what i was trying to say is this and i've been trying to say this all night long-winded sunshine is the greatest disinfectant right all we're going to keep doing is spreading our love tasha we're just going to keep sharing the plight that we're on to pursue the unconditional love that we search for. We know we love each other. We know most times it's unconditional. We just want to love each other the way the dog loves us. He loves us unconditionally. You step on my dog's paw, okay. he's going to scream. Do you guys talk about your relationship off the podcast together? No, this is it. This is the time. This, now is, we do. this is when the door opens where you well, can My point is, is that the dog, even if it's, you Can you tell me, is this... Is this do you guys talk about your relationship outside of this? Yeah. It it's okay. very, I think right, it's, right. I'll just say this because we really, we, re- okay, well. Okay, okay, I just wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> I just was curious if this is just when it happens. Dude, I wake <laughs> this up, is when it happens. Here's, here's, how, here's how we roll. Yeah. I, first of all, we, we go to have bed, we have here. a weighted blanket. It weighs yeah. 35 pounds, right? And she always, it just, weighs 15 pounds. She, it's so fucking heavy. It's so yeah. heavy. She can't lift the blanket. It's it's just weighted blanket. It's supposed yeah. to make you feel loved or whatever. And um, It's so and, swaddling. And we wake up and she goes, baby, you stretched it out. She complains about my legs being too long for the bed or whatever. And then I wake up, I make coffee. Coffee, I do the dishes or I put, I put, uh, you know, I put a uh, scrambled, I do, I, I start cooking. I start, you know, and I've got my headphones on. I'm listening to some sports talk radio. You know, it's, we wake up and we, we've, we've learned, you know, where, what, what we want to do. Like we learned, you know, she'll, she'll kind of start getting ready and we'll, we just kind of like figured out what works for both of us. And I think that's it. That's, that's important. It's important in a relationship to figure out what works and just sort of like live up to your end of it. Are and you, are you seeking validation right here? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just uh, trying to. Because I'll tell you up. right now, you, you got it going on. You got <laughs> it. I mean, it's working. I think it's going so, fine. Like you got something that it, people want. Yeah. So just whatever you're doing yeah. is. I think proper. Tasha. I think Tasha has something that people want. But you both do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, no. The, but yeah, but so you have a thing. You have a thing so that you have going on, and and people would people would uh, wish to have this. Trust me, thank it you. doesn't work. Well, we appr- it we, doesn't work. We like we're trying to make this happen, but it, it ain't happening. Listen, Jonesy, you have it happening. We open the door so up. So do you appreciate it? That's my question to you. Uh, so much so, we open the door up to do our you? friends. Do you? Do you appreciate it? Do you appreciate it? Oh yeah. 
Do you appreciate it? Tasha, you appreciate it? Yeah. Do you appreciate it? I, I am overcome with gratitude. Great. You should be. Okay. I'm growing legs on this snake Sorry body to interrupt of mine. You. I've got... I, uh, we, the, 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 the best part of the podcast is that we get to talk candidly in a way that, we, in, in with friends, in a way that we get to like own up to our thoughts, but also like be respectful. Whereas if we were alone, you know, there might've been a part of this conversation where Tasha goes, fuck you. <laughs> and just walks away. You know, the, or me, you know, there might, you know what I mean? Like we wouldn't have had a three hour conversation. We'd be on the couch watching, you know, the umbrella Academy or whatever. She would have fallen asleep at the 10 minute What's mark. The umbrella it's academy. some Netflix show. We oh, barely okay. got through an episode three tra- times trying. Oh. But the point is, is that I'm like, so the, dumb. The, 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 <laughs> like what is a feminist the podcast? Marriage? What is mansplaining? <laughs> like, tell me um, these uh, phrases. The podcast, Podcast I'm very brings us back. Connected. It brings us back to a time when people would sit around the dinner table and have a conversation, and that's what this is. And you know, you to wrap me the up, idea for a sketch. There you go, L- Jimmy. Me. Come and eat your. Uh, <laughs> come and eat your supper. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> come and eat your supper. And the kid just sets up a podcast. I'll Chew have supper, but we're mic. having a podcast. I like it. This is what why we're doing it. Will they eat croissants? <laughs> I would hope that you guys talk outside of the podcast. I'm sure that you do. We, you you got a good thing going. You got a good thing going. You, we're you're, gonna, you're the envy of me. We're going to take a week just off. FYI. Talking. We're done talking. Because this is a great thing that you have going. I wish I had something like this. Weird AF news on all things iTunes. It's all sure. over the place. Weird AF news is pretty much what's all the, over What's the your place. Patreon link? Um, 30 something donors right now. No, but like, oh, I, link? I meant, it, do we just search <laughs> Weird AF news? Yeah, you, um, oh, on so Patreon? Patreon or, yeah, yeah, patreon.com slash weirdafnews. So yeah, but no one's going to jump from here to the Patreon. They'll well, just, but listen to the podcast first. So go just listen to Jonesy's weird podcast. Weird AF News. I do you, five days a week. Weird stories. It's reliable. It, every, like the sunshine, baby. Go subscribe. And I, I always say this. I say, you know, not, and you can tell that I don't, I'm not really tuned in to the culture because uh, I don't listen to or follow like mainstream news ever anymore. Um, I'm very much pulled into the weird news at this point as as a job, but um, I've you know I strongly believe that if you kind of unplug from mainstream news and just listen to weird news, your life will be a lot better. You'll be happier. Happier for sure. You'll laugh a lot because seriously, who wants to hear another Trump story about him being you know evil somewhere or or people yeah the media is only the ones making the money down or people like mistreating some poor country and or corporations being total fucking devils like this is what all the news usually is disasters and terrible treatings of human hear beings. hear about some lady fucking her duvet cover or have, whatever hear about a lady trying to marry her du- her duvet cover at weird af news at yeah weird no, af I mean, news because i'll be honest with you we're wrapping up but i i i, I do other people's podcast they don't promote my shit nearly enough so i want i just want people to know that's very sweet of you when i have someone when tasha and i have someone who comes into our kitchen and has a guinness with us they're our friend and they deserve to be your friend too so go to weird af news i'll put the link in the description and go check out jonesy and then i'm going to do one of your patreon episodes and we're going to we're going to do oh, weird you can do the first one if you'd like they i'd love uh, to i've never done weird stories with another human being please so like I'll bring my laptop over and we'll just set up the mics and we'll just and Done. you can you can give like your take on the weird story too and I'll just like let you roll and like we'll see what happens. Done. It'll yeah. be your own little weekend update. That's yeah. done. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let, yeah I'll and my listeners will get a kick out of that because they're probably sick of hearing me. They want to hear someone who's yeah. you know is someone got a different funny diverse ang- from you. Another 100%. white guy. <laughs> 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 so and again, an- another white New Englander. <laughs> if anyone wants to, uh, you got to go to our <laughs> Patreon dot com slash the sap. And again, I, I've got posts up there that are public. We're gonna keep doing public posts. I'm gonna put my car accident video up there for everyone you to put see. Public posts? I do public posts. I've never done a public. I do post. a random post. Put it all there. private. It's all behind the scenes. Just like maybe y- I you can do, do status public. updates, and you can also do um, Patreon has a thing called Lens, which is like their version of Snapchat, which we need to start doing, where you just like can document some random stuff. I want people to go to the Patreon, even that. if you can't afford that, to pay. You're teaching me things. Just go over Patreon. to it, even if you can't afford to pay. Go check it out. Go see what it's all about. It really is a good community. For every dollar that comes our way, it's just one less second I have to do my other side job. You know what I mean? When we we're at the point now where. You know what I mean? We're at forty-four dollars a month. Well, look, I mean that's like three or four hours of extra time. I don't have to go do the thing that the I was meant tug. to do. The rub and tug. I'm, yeah, I'm, tu- I'm tugging tug and rubbing. It's terrible. It's that's how we got Jonesy here today. I gotta go <laughs> tug him out. Um, and Tasha, anything you need to promote? Nope. Uh, and then so you're gonna do our April. You're gonna if if it works, yeah. you'll do our April brunch. I'll show do your then. April brunch. Show. Fuck that yeah, sounds lovely. It's, Where a, it's on a Sunday at noon. Sunday at noon, baby. I'm in, man. Where can people follow you? Social media wise uh, on Instagram at Funny Jones. Funny Jones. 
Funny Jones or Funny Jonesy? Just Funny Jones, like Funny Bones with a J. That's funny a, Jones. Yeah, that's the only one I like to put out there. Thank you so much for doing this podcast. We made it to two and a half hours. Thank you. Wow, I love you guys. What? You guys that are was great. A marathon. I, gotta I had a blast. Pee. All right, this was it. <laughs> this up, everyone. Bye. Bye. I got two sponsors this week.